Okay, well then why don't we get started? It is seven o'clock. Uh, good ev evening, everyone. Uh, Gordy and I are gonna tag back and forth on this, but uh, he and I had met and went over some of the, uh, the agenda and rules of the meeting. It's difficult enough to have a meeting with uh, one board of five members, but having 10 members makes it even more uh, challenging. And with that, I'll turn it over to Gordy. Okay, thank you, Eric. And I would start off with the uh, first part of the meeting is to uh, introduce, we have two new village trustees. So if Brian could somehow activate them or unless they make a movement, I'd like to welcome Athena Park as one of the new village trustees. So if she could show, she's here. I know she's here somewhere. Yeah. And the other one is Jenna, Jenna Good Hopkins. So I wanna thank her. So I wanna welcome both as two new village trustees and. So that's the introduction. And if you want, just to, for the very first part, Eric, I'll uh, just reveal the agenda. Are there any adjustments, changes, or additions on behalf of the village trustees for this meeting tonight? Hearing none, I'll turn it back to Eric okay. for his. Scott is. I think Scott's trying to pipe in. Okay. Go ahead, Scott. Thank you. Um, I would like to add um, conversation on moving forward with a uh, community vote <clears throat> on the town village merger. I want to throw that on the agenda. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Anything else? If not, I'll let Eric take it. Take the first part of it. Let he and I agree to for the agenda. And is there any additions or changes to the agendas presented from the select board? And Matt, are uh, you gonna have to turn his mic? Okay. Thank you. Um, did we wanna mention um, the, did we wanna take action on uh, doing something for the Pomerleau family? Okay, we'll add that. That should be real quickly. Anything else? Seeing none. Okay, Gory, did you want to go over the, the rules of the meeting? And then you can you can go over the agenda. Yep. Um, the planned rules, Eric and I met, and um, this is what we've come up with as two two co-chairs working together. Um, all microphones will be muted except for the town administrator, village manager, select board chair, and trustee chair. Public chat will be turned off. Elected officials will have the first opportunity for comments and questions. These will be made one at a time. Once elected officials have had an opportunity to speak, we will start to accept public comments. Public chat will then be turned on and individuals will be called on one at a time. For all comments from the general public, and for all of us actually, please be mindful of time for everyone present to have an opportunity to speak. And Eric and I have agreed with the agenda and all the things that are going on. We'd like to both uh, adjourn at 9.30, if not before, but that won't happen before. But we'd like to close the meeting at 9.30 with all the agenda and other things that have been going on here. So um, that's, okay. that's the rules for the meeting. Now it's yours, Eric. Okay, and if, for those that may have the agenda in front of you, I'll walk right down it quickly. This introduction, uh, introduction section, we had slated 10 minutes. Selection of the webmaster services, 15 minutes. Memorandum mm -hmm. of understanding between the town and village office staff, uh, 20 minutes. And then the uh, discussion on the creation of a racial justice committee. And that was uh, for an hour and a half to end at, uh, at 9.30. And then if we're adding on a, a little discussion on the merger, I expect it to go a little longer. And with that, I guess I would propose that we take up the Pomelo question first. That'll be a that should be really quick, and then we'll get right into item number two. Uh, for those of you who may not be familiar or aware, Ernie Pomelo's daughter uh, died this last week of breast cancer, and the Pomelos have been very generous to the community, and we thought it might be appropriate if a uh, sympathy or condolence card was. Uh, signed by all board members and sent to the Pomelo family. So I guess we would look for a, a motion 
so directing either Rosemary or one of the administrators to, to pick up a card, or if, if there's interest in doing something else from the board. So I would open it up for board members' comments. Okay. So I am unmuting our board members for comments on this. Uh, one quick note, um, something has changed on this. On some of you, I have an ask to unmute, so you have to unmute yourself. And on others, I can unmute you by turning your microphone on and off. So you may have to uh, unmute yourself after I call on you. Uh, so is there anybody who has a I think Nat wanted to speak. Okay. All right, Nat, go ahead. I just wanted to move that we do this, perhaps in conjunction with the trustees, um, the Palmer Lowe family. Ernie in particular has been uh, uh, an important part of this community with their ownership of the... Uh, we lost Nat. And, uh, we may have a lot for Johnson. Oh, there you go again. We lost you during the, after ownership. I'll be brief. Uh, I, I move that we do this. Okay, we have a motion from the select board. Is there a second on the select board? I see a second from Mike Dunham. Uh, before I open up the discussion, Gordy, do you want to lead with the same motion? And a Danny motion and a second for the uh, same motion that was just proposed by the select board. I'll second that, Gordy. Do we have a first motion? Looks like. Oh, Ryan. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll make the motion the same as the, the town select board. I'll okay. make the second. Okay, we have motion second. So we're all set, Eric, for both boards for a discussion. Is there any discussion from the select board? Um, Brian, is there anyone from the public that wants to speak to this? Thank you. Thank you. All right, I've opened up chat again. Um, please raise your hand. That is the easiest way for me to recognize you and, and call on you is if you use the, the hand raise button um, uh, built into Zoom. Uh, but from Donna is asking for clarification on what do this means. Uh, if I can, uh, I believe that the request and the suggestion was that uh, the administrative staff purchase a card uh, for both boards to sign uh, here at the office. That's how that I understand. A fair assessment, uh, as everyone understood it. And then if yeah. each board could come in and sign, I think that. That's a lot better, Eric and I were saying, that's a lot better than a text or an email. And if, if, if we can all come in and sign it with a personal signature, that carries a lot of power to the family. So if there's no comments from the public, I'll call for a vote from the select board. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, I guess I'm getting all eyes. Gonna, take a second. Uh, Okay. That's all the select board. Nope, I'm gonna get Mike. Okay, that's all the select board okay. members. All those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Over to you, Gordy. Okay, on behalf of the village for the same motion the select board just voted on. All those in favor of the motion, signify with an aye, please. Aye. 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 All those opposed? The ice have it. And Brian only gets one vote, right? <laughs> There's two of them there. Uh, for the uh, webmaster services, Brian or Meredith, one of you want to lead off or Rosemary on that? Uh, sure, no, I can. Okay, we all have the proposals before us. But. Yep. Everybody should have the proposal in front of, it, in front of you. We have two competing proposals uh, from 3W proposals. Uh, or three three W promotions, uh, Elisa Clancy. 
Uh, she's done work with uh, with us before uh, when we needed some emergency help, and uh, she works with the Lamoille Economic Development Corporation. Uh, so she has a good track record, and uh, we've worked with her before. I would say that their their maintenance is, is extremely similar. They present it in slightly different ways, but uh, what they're proposing is, is close to the same thing. Uh, she is proposing uh, $340 annually for website maintenance, um, additional services as needed at $85 an hour, and uh, hosting is available through her at $270 annually. Uh, Grant Harper, a uh, local resident in Johnson, who has done uh, some work with, I believe it's the school board. Uh, so he also works in our community and, and has some strong community connections, uh, is offering very similar um, services, a little bit more upfront and a little bit less for an hourly rate. Uh, he's charging $708 per year for uh, the maintenance plan, uh, which is uh, a little bit more comprehensive than the one su suggested by Eliza. Um, and charges $45 per hour for additional work. Um, they both have good community connections and uh, good references. So uh, it's I don't have a strong recommendation for one over the other. Um, yeah, with Eliza, we'll pay less upfront uh, with uh, an opportunity that it might cost us a little bit more whenever we need to bring her in for specific tasks. Uh, a little bit more is included and it has a lower rate for hourly work uh, with Grant's proposal. Um, I've worked with Eliza uh, and been very satisfied with her work. Uh, I've seen a little bit of what Grant has done and it looks like it will be fine too. So I do not have a strong recommendation one way or the other. Okay. Does Meredith also and Rosemary echo that same? I similarly don't have a strong recommendation either way. Um, as Brian mentioned, it looks like Website Valley um, Grant um, does have a lower hourly rate, and I noticed that he did say includes an hour of content um, updates per month, which could be helpful if we just didn't have time to do something ourselves in-house, and we could shoot him an email saying, you know, do this quickly for us. Um, that may be helpful, and if having that included would save some money. Um, so that was the real one advantage I saw, one or the other, but again, I think they're both qualified. Yeah, I don't have a preference. Either one is, is fine with me. Okay, um, I guess from select board, we'll open up select board members. It looks like Mike wants to be recognized. And I'm, if, if you're in agreement, Gordy, we can open it up to all board members at the same time. Sure. Okay. Okay, Mike. Yeah. Okay, you're good. Uh, this is for Brian and Meredith. Uh, how much additional work is done in a year's time? Uh, how much has been done so far? Not much, but uh, we really were behind on running updates and uh, website maintenance. Uh, we, we don't have anybody on staff who has enough technical expertise to deal with this when we have a serious problem with the website like we had uh, at the, around the end of last month or the beginning of this one. We, we had a serious issue and really ran up to the limits of what anybody in on our staff knows and we had to uh, bring somebody in for it and that really kind of raised the question of you know we're not doing backups on the website it isn't included in our, in our local backup here um, we're not running the updates on it so uh, th there's a lot that that could be done um, so eighty five dollars an hour uh, could be there could be a lot of money spent for that additional work versus the 45. There could be, uh, out, 
without knowing in advance, it's a little hard to say what's not going to be covered under the maintenance plan. So I, but it is true that grant offers uh, a more comprehensive basic maintenance plan. We get more with our flat rate from grant than we do with ELIZA. Um, ELIZA's flat rate is considerably less, uh, almost half as much. Right. So we could pay for, you know, several hours of her time before it equaled the same price. Okay. I know that doesn't make the question of which one to choose any easier, but. Well, that's true. But if you're doing an awful lot of extra work, uh, that $40 an hour uh, would make a big difference in the difference in the prices. Yeah. I expect there's probably a good amount of work to do right now uh, because we haven't had anybody doing anything. So I think that, you know, especially the first year, you know, we're a little bit more likely to, to need some additional hours. Thank you. Do you echo that, Meredith? I would. Um, I would say in addition to the absolutely critical security work that needs to be done um, that hasn't been paid much attention to in the last few years, I think we may want to do some more um, aesthetic changes, you know, update a few pictures, you know, it's been very much the same for, I would say at least five years, and it might be nice to refresh it a little bit. Um, and having a little bit more flexibility to have hours put towards that would be helpful. Okay. I think Kyle. Yep, like that's that. Kyle's hand. Okay, thank you. Um, do we know if either of these folks can do website development or, um, cause I know we've talked about updating the look of the website as well. And I didn't know if either of them could do that. I believe that they both can. I know Eliza can from other work that I've done with her through uh, the LEDC. Mm -hmm but that's also something that I would expect Grant to be able to do. And in Grant's proposal, he does say that he, that we would have included with his maintenance plan an hour of kind of content work uh, mm -hmm. annually also. Okay. And then my other question is with Eliza, since she's worked with us already before, do you just feel like she would be able to get off the ground running faster because she knows our system already or um, I don't think our system's complicated enough for that to make much of a difference. Okay. Um, we have a pretty, as far as I understand it, we have a pretty standard WordPress site. I, I don't think anybody familiar with WordPress in general would have a hard time with ours. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. But yes, Eliza is already at least a little bit familiar with with ours. Mm -hmm. um, if no one of the other board members want to speak, um, Mike would like a second time. Yes, we had talked about our website uh, looking kind of crude and I'm glad you brought that up again, Kyle. Uh, we need to really spruce it up a little bit. Uh, it does look a little tacky. And it wouldn't hurt to have a little bit more of a modern look to it. Just for procedure, Eric and I have agreed on this particular article because of the similarities of the two that instead of having two separate votes for this one, we would take a one vote instead of having three to two on one board and two to three on the other, we've agreed to take one vote with all 10 together and whichever one comes out, hopefully with a six to four or something, unless it's a tie and that's what we, we both would be moving on. Correct, Eric? Right, yeah. I'm hoping the, the boards would, there's no strong feelings one way or the other and uh, we could all come to an agreement on one that we all can feel comfortable with. All right, Kyle, I can see you. I, okay, I'd like to move that we um, hire Eliza, and I'm sorry, I don't have her last name in front of me. 
Um, Sorry, I'm moving between screens. Eliza Clancy. Clancy. At 3W Promotions. At 3W Promotions. Thank you. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'm lo looking for a second. Lacking a second, the motion will die. And the motion dies. <laughs> we have another motion. <laughs> Mike? Your mic's turned off. Yeah, go ahead. Just a second. I, I move that we go with Website Valley LLC. Okay, we got a motion. Do we have a second? I think Nat's trying to speak. All right, go ahead, Nat. That's the one I was uh, favoring. I'm, I'm open to hearing what what other board members' um, feelings are, but I will second this motion just to get it on the table so we can discuss. Okay, we have a motion and a second to go with Website Valley. Open up for discussion again. Are there think, any board members who want to speak on this? I think Nat lost connections there. And basically what we heard from the administrators was not a strong opinion on one over the other. Uh, Doug? It, it looks to me like the, the, the um, other than the extra work that um, the uh, website Valley would would do on, on under its basic contract to break even is about nine, a little over nine hours on that, assuming equivalency. Um, I, I don't know, you know, this is completely outside my wheelhouse. Uh, so I'm very hesitant on this. I, I do know that uh, 3W Promotions is, uh, Lamoille Fibernet uh, is working with, with Alyssa. Um, I would tend to be in, because of the the build that I think and the maintenance is necessary now, looking at costs, I would tend to go with with um, Website Valley, but it's kind of in the dark for me. They're clearly highly recommended both. Um, Gordy, there wasn't any comments from any of your board members. I don't know if anybody, I think Scott wants to speak. Yep, Scott, you gotta unmute yourself. There you go, Scott. Yay. Because we were muted, that's why we weren't talking and it wasn't really quite clear that we were able to talk. I thought it was a select board, then a village thing, but I guess I'm wrong. So yeah, I did some quick math and Doug is right. Actually, I got a little over 10 hours of time for a break even point. And if we're going to be looking at a website um, fix and redesign, <clears throat> I'm not really quite sure how long that takes. But, um, you know, 10 hours is it's a day and change. So um, I'm looking at this as a financial gig. And we have a lot of community members who are down and out and having a hard time paying bills. And uh, I think $85 is excessive. Um, with what our community is facing right now for income. So, thanks. Does anyone know where Eliza lives? My only, I'm with, I'm with Doug, my, my IT and computer expertise is limited. So I'm just looking at it with, uh, we have one person that lives in Johnson and the old phrase of keeping money local if both of them are equal. That's, that's other than that, I don't have any preference, I guess. If, He's the taxpayer in Johnson, and but I don't know. I don't know where Eliza lives. If she is also a taxpayer too or not, and that's that's the only thing I can see different from the two. Uh, I don't believe that she's a Johnson resident, but she is a Lamoille County resident. Okay. And is if this is. Wrapping up for discussion from board members, we can open it up to the public. All right, I'm turning the chat back on. Uh, and if any members of the public have a comment, please raise your hand and I'll, I'll call on you. Uh, I'm not 
seen any. Okay. Is is the board prepared to vote? Uh, I think Doug wants to speak. All right. I, I've got two comments, but Doug, you had one. Okay, go ahead, Doug. Yeah, I, I have a. I have. I didn't know how this was going to proceed. You know, a, after Gordy and Eric's introductory statements, I am worried that uh, that we are not a unified board, and so I don't think the. Uh, you know, the methodology would actually work for a correct hiring agreement. So I would really prefer that we do this or recommend we do this the, the normal way of having a motion from the village and a motion and, and the second and the vote there and also the similarly the select board. Gordy, where this is actually in Doug's wheelhouse, providing <laughs> some free legal advice, I think I'll yield to his advice that we probably should have uh, a motion and second from both boards. And maybe before I call for the uh, uh, vote on the, the select board side, make sure that the trustees have the same mirror motion. Sounds fair. Yeah. So, trustee, do you agree with the, the motion and a second, at least to vote on it up or down that's been made? Few minutes ago. Okay, Scott, uh, you'll have to unmute yourself, but go ahead. All right. So I, I totally understand, you know, why we're muting the the trustees and the select board, but it makes the meeting really disjointed. Uh, we could try to unmute all board members. Yeah, I, I think I think we, you know, we're grown up and we can like pull this one off. <laughs> well, most of us are growing up. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, there's a baby at, at the table, so all bets are off. Um, so, Gordy, are you looking for a motion? Yes. Yeah, I'll make a motion um, for the Web Valley um, to take the contract. I'll second it. We have a motion second. Eric, you have a motion and a second, correct? Yes. All right, Longs, Scott and Jenna just made the motion. All, uh, on behalf of the Village Trustees, all those in favor of the motion for Website oh, Valley. some comments from the public. I'm sorry, yeah. So uh, from chat, um, let's see. I've got uh, the Historical Society webpage was done by Grant. Uh, Grant has also done the United Church of Johnson website. Uh, Jess Bigford has worked with Eliza and uh, knows her to be very efficient and knows that she lives in Hyde Park. Um, there was a question about what other sites do we know Eliza has done. I know that she has done the one for the LEDC. Um, she's done the website for uh, the uh, Green Mountain Byway, and uh, she's done a number of local business websites uh, throughout the county also. And I, that's all the public comment I've got. Okay, For if uh, no one else has any public comments or anything from chat then, on behalf of the village trustees, all of them, those in favor of the, of the motion signify with an aye. 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 Those opposed? Nice to have it on the village side. And on the select board side, mirror motion. All those in favor, same five is saying aye. Aye. I, Nat, I didn't, were you a uh, aye? Let me Can't get hear. Yeah, I agree with Scott. This uh, mute on mute stuff is really confusing. Okay. Um, difficult and awkward. Um, I am in favor of this. I voted aye. Okay, aye. Mike? Aye. Aye. Kyle? Nay. Nay. Doug? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Okay, uh, the next item is a memorandum of understanding. All right. Well, I I'll read this one, but uh, first I want to apologize for it being a little difficult with the mute and unmute. The 
this change that it's made to ask to unmute is brand new. It didn't used to look like that even this morning. Uh, so the, the system changed sometime this afternoon and is a little harder to work with. Uh, so I apologize it coming up. Uh, can you just you're doing unmute fine. all board members? Yeah, yeah I can try that. Uh, okay. So board members can go ahead and leave themselves unmuted. Uh, if you need to mute for some reason, then uh, go ahead and I can keep an eye on you and, and unmute you as you need to. I was just going to note that I know Zoom, I think, was down for a big portion of the country today, so they may have been doing some tinkering with it that may not have been helpful. Yeah. Yeah, the, the muting and unmuting changed uh, sometime after lunch, uh, the last time I hosted a meeting. So. <laughs> so it looks like Brian, Scott, and Mike are still muted. Yeah, Mike had just muted himself. Scott, you can unmute. Yeah, I just had myself muted on my own. Okay. Like to do that. And then you don't have to hear me say anything. I think, I think it looks That's like fine. Uh, you'll just have to raise your hand and let me know when you when you need to speak. I'll just unmute myself. Uh, unfortunately, you can't. I need to oh. keep going to you and telling you that you can unmute. Wow, OK. Uh, which is the new system. The old system used to be I could mute and unmute you myself. And I can still do that to some people, and I don't know why. OK. Uh, but like Nat, I can turn his microphone on and off. Uh, one or two other board members, I can, I think Doug's another one, I can turn his microphone on and off. Yours is one of the new ones that I, I can't. OK. So I don't, again, it, it, it changed ex very recently. So I apologize. Um, so uh, the next item up was the Memorandum of Understanding between Town and Village Office Staff. Uh, I've done my best to incorporate comments from both boards uh, for this one. So uh, this, uh, you've all seen it before. Uh, it's in your packet. Um, I don't think there's a whole lot to add here. Uh, it's just that it is, uh, again, for the accounts receivable clerk uh, which is Marla Emery now, and uh, the administrative assistant, which is Ann Mullings right now. Um, for their two positions, they are independently employed by the town and the village. Uh, this would set their compensation rates at the same as they've been so far. We'll start tracking hours and uh, use that the next time we're signing a memorandum of understanding to um, get a better idea of what the cost sharing is between the two. We'll have to write something similar for uh, the town clerk position and her assistant, uh, but that will be a little complicated uh, and a slightly different topic because Rosemary is not a town or village employee, but she is paid by both the town and the village. Uh, so that gets a, that relationship will get a little bit it will be a little bit complicated, so it's not included in this agreement. Um, and I'm just going to ask for the benefit of Jenna and Athena, you know, if you guys got any questions and understand why we're doing this, uh, you know, be, feel free to pipe up and ask. Thank you. It's a little yeah, complicated. Yeah, yeah I, I did <laughs> skim over the background a little bit. Would you? like a little more detail on how we got to this point? Yes, please, that would be important. Okay, great, happy to. So uh, his, at some point in the past, the uh, two positions were independently employed by the town and the village, uh, and they were sought to be a, as shared employees uh, at some point in the past, and they've been that way for a long time, where they were uh, employed by both the town and the village. Um, that is, that makes it for a, a complicated relationship. Uh, whenever we have disagreements about compensation, about discipline, about uh, work agreements, about duties, uh, that made everything more complicated. So it was decided uh, 
about six, no longer than six months ago, it was decided late last year, I think, uh, that we were going to uh, split the two positions and to be solely town and solely village. But there's the agreement that we have in principle, if not in writing, is that they will both work on whatever tasks need completing. So that if somebody comes to the office when our office is open again, if somebody comes to the office, they don't have to get a water bill from the village clerk. They can come and whoever's available can come to the window and uh, provide a water bill or a tax bill for the town or the, for the village. That everybody's gonna be cross-trained on uh, those public facing duties and will by agreement supply them as, as needed. Um, this agreement uh, just formalizes that relationship that we're going to both make the town and village are going to make a commitment that we support our solely uh, our sole employees to work with the other municipal entity to support each other and provide I think the phrase we use is uh, uh, a, a continuity of services so whenever anybody comes in they can be seen by whoever is available and get the same level of service. Uh, but they'll still be our employee and your employee. Okay, Meredith. And I would just add um, for Jenna and Nathita that the trustees did review um, the original draft of this at the meeting uh, we had in March, our March trustee meeting. Um, and I think to a large degree, Brian has incorporated the comments we had. Um, I think the only thing that might need a little cleanup work is the term. Um, I think it says till December 31st, 2020. Um, yep, maybe, you're right, it does. Yeah, so I think that was, from my review, it's the only thing that we needed to clean up. Um, in terms of, um, you know, obviously both boards will set the compensation um, independently for the two employees. Um, I think in terms of giving us sort of an out if, you know, the town decided to give their employee a very large raise. We have a 60 day notice clause to say, uh, you know, we're going to terminate this agreement and just, you know, pay for our employee ourselves. Um, so I think both boards and it's not just village, the town has the same out clause. So it gives us some comfort that if their board does something uh, financially that we can't work with, that we do have the ability to get out of the agreement. Um, and I don't think that's going to happen. I think we're all under similar financial uh, constraints, so I don't see a large, you know, swing either way, but um, that is something we had talked about. And just a, a <laughs> little detail, it's a little bit more than 60 days in practice. It's 60 days after the next meeting of the board that receives the request for termination. Uh, the idea being that whatever board receives the request presumably then needs a little bit of time to work through the question of how to proceed. Uh, and so they get one meeting to hear about it, another meeting to, if they need any research, and then they would, could have a, a last meeting to uh, vote and take action. Did Brian, could I add one thing? Yeah. Um, just also for Jenna and Athena, another thing is when the, actually both boards, when they do their rates of compensation, they also look separately at uh, what's comparable with other uh, municipals or towns with the same population and tax base and so forth. So speaking on the village side with the utilities, oftentimes our rates for the employees will be higher because of the, the, the competitive nature of the public utilities, so sometimes that raises the wages up. So that's just another area that uh, sometimes there's a little bit of, of a difference between the two. It's not on the quality of work or the work to do with the people, but it's just sometimes it's comparing apples to oranges between utilities and a, a town form of government. Not seeing any, any promotion. Oh, Meredith wanted to raise your hand, I think. Yep. So for the term, I think, um, you know, right now it says uh, one year from the date signed, 
um, to December 31st, 2020, um, I would think the term would just be, if we're comfortable, um, through December 31st, 2021. You know, it's, it's a little Sorry. beyond here, but um, it would cover this year and presumably next year uh, in terms of budget discussions, I think. So I guess when we look for a motion, we would look for a motion to accept this as presented with that change on the uh, term date. Is the select board prepared to make a motion and second? I move we adopt this. I'm sorry, Doug, why don't you go? Oh, I, I was wondering, does that mean that uh, we would strike the remainder of the, of the language that starts if no agreement is reached? So it would it would end at uh, December 31st, uh, 2021 on term? I believe that the proposal was simply to change uh, 2020 to 2021 and no other changes. That was my proposal, but it may be simpler um, just to have the term of the agreement through December 31st, 2021. Um, I, I guess we could, if people are comfortable, we could discuss adding a clause that it will automatically renew unless uh, one board indicates a desire not to. Or we could add a year to the uh, second instance of December 31st. Say the term of this agreement is for one year from the date signed to December 31st, 2021. If no agreement is reached as of December 31st and then adding 2021 it may be extended by 90 days and, and so on. And that would take care of it because if we take this out to 2021, we are going to run past two instances of, of December 31st. So uh, we do want to clarify which December 31st we mean. I, I think for that first sentence, I, I think it would just be the term of this agreement is from the date signed. I think we could get rid of for one year. It's just for yeah. the, from the date signed to December 31st, 2021. I know we're going to have to have this in uh, pretty good language for Donna when we uh, make a motion. So maybe either Meredith or Brian could read exactly what that term is going to look like for the benefit of Donna. I can take a look. Um, so I would say the term of this agreement is for, I'm sorry, it's from the date signed to December 31st, 2021. If no agreement is reached as of December 31st, 2021, it may be extended for 90 days by the consent of the town select board and village trustees. Okay. As presented, is there a motion from the select board and second? So moved, Mr. Mm Chairman. -hmm. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. second. We uh, have a second. Any more discussion? Quick thing. Um, under item three, staff will track their hours spent on town and village duties. This data will be used to set cost sharing in the next agreement. I just want to make sure that the methodology for both employees is the same. It also just, it's, if I was uh, given this task at work, it would be. I think we're losing so, Nat again. Um, we I, lost you again, Nat. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Real quick, just to ask um, the supervisors to make sure that this gets done weekly because it can be the sort of task that just gets pushed aside. Okay, uh, Gordy, do you want to look for a mirror motion? Sure. We're going to take a motion to, uh, which is the same one as what the select board has just made a motion and second for. Okay. 
Make the motion. Okay, Bruce Scott made the motion. Do we have a, do we have a second? I'll second it. Gonna second it. Okay. Now we're open for public discussion. Are there any other board members that have comments or questions? Okay. And then I'll open it up to the public. Uh, so the chat room is turned back on. Uh, and again, raising your hand is still the, the easiest and best way for me to uh, see you and recognize you. I'm not seeing any comment from the public. Okay. So the select board, are we ready to vote? I believe we are. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. On behalf of the village, all those in favor of the motion, signify with an aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. So I'll make the changes, and then when you come in to sign the card for the Palmer Lowe's, uh, keep an eye out for this, and the office staff will have a copy for you to sign. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Uh, creation of the Racial Justice Committee. I believe this was brought. Yes. Can we step back just one second on Brian's Okay. Side? For, the, for the, the signing of this, Brian, Usually, because of the COVID thing, we have Gordy sign for us. Do you want each member to sign or just our representative board member, our chair? That is up to you. Um, so speaking on behalf of the village trustees, um, for me, less paper is better. And if we're okay with Gordy signing on our behalf, I'd be more than happy to have that happen. Agreed. I think the thought was if we had to go in to sign the, the card for the Pomelos that you know, you'd be there anyhow. Yeah, so it's, just, it's just more duration and more handling of paperwork. I'd rather not. Okay, how about, have no okay. How about your other trustees? Are you in agreement with Scott and Jenna? Yes. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, I think as long as your board supports it, then uh, I don't see any problem with it. And, and I will leave it up to the select board members also if they would prefer that just the chair signs, if that's fine. I have no problem coming in, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Doug, Nat, Kyle, any thoughts? You I care? Can, I can come in, Mark. Okay. Fine, either way. Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, the creation of a racial justice committee. Uh, this was something at the select board I had brought some time ago to the select board level with thought of uh, forming something that would uh, be able to dedicate the time to, to research and dig into some of these issues that we've been dealing with at the select board level. Um, and I thought it might be a better use of the select board's time because literally we do not have the time to dedicate to this that it deserves. We thought a committee would be uh, more appropriate, but that's how it came to be coming to the select board. Um, we have not taken any real action on this and I believe it something of some version of this came to the trustees as well. So that's why it's here tonight uh, for a joint discussion. Gordy, do you want to say how it came to be? Yeah. With, um, with a discussion I had with Meredith at midday today, she reminded me that the trustees have approved the formation of a racial justice committee, but we have, did not go into any of the details that we will be discussing tonight, such as those four criteria items. So, uh, so the, the select board would need a vote, but if I understand it right, correct me if I'm wrong, Meredith, but the trustees already took a vote, but we need a good discussion on how to form such a committee, and this is what Eric and I came, and Brian came up with, to provide a statement, how should members be selected, how should a moderator be selected. So this is gonna generate quite a discussion after, Eric, I guess for procedure, if you 
have your discussion or take a vote and then we will dig deeper into this, I assume. Okay, so if the trustees have already decided the first item of will they or not have a committee, you guys are ahead of us. Uh, so I guess it would be just a select board discussion for the first item. What opening up to board members? And I'll just jump in really briefly. Um, so the trustees obviously voted um, to form a committee on the village side. I do think it may be helpful if um, we may want to take a vote to clarify that we're going to be forming a joint committee with the town. Um, you know, that was not specifically what we talked about before, but um, that may be helpful, like uh, Gordy mentioned with these four other criteria to make it clear that we're working with the same committee. Okay, that makes sense. I guess we'd open it up to board members. So um, at our last select board member, I mentioned a uh, select board uh, meeting, I mentioned that I was going to propose that we actually um, re consider renaming this committee to the social justice committee um, to broaden its scope of work. Um, because I just think it would be really short sighted if we did not consider opening this up to race and gender, for example, and like all intersecting social identities when we um, are creating the mission statement, because identities are simply not self-contained units. It's you know a relationship between people in history, people in communities, people in institutions, which is why I think changing the name and broadening its scope is um, really important if we're fully and truly committed to moving equity issues forward in the right direction. So I know that the trustees have taken a vote on this, but I would love to open up um, before we get into the weeds of, of how we're gonna form this committee to, to, to consider um, actually uh, changing the name to the social justice committee so that this committee can really, um, um, yeah, just, uh, um, more broad in, in how it speaks about race issues um, and that it's open to all all social identities. I'm going to throw that out there right from the beginning. <laughs> um, I guess whether it's called racial justice or social justice committee it still comes back to the same question of does there interests in the select board of forming such a committee and I'm, I'm not sure Gordy how the trustees will handle if you've already established a committee did you have a particular name for it or formalized or was it just a committee maybe you can help me out Meredith I assume if we make two separate motions of boards that instead of calling it racial justice that if the, if the members majority agree with Kyle that we could just change the name to a social justice committee and vote that through in that regard does that sound yeah. fair i think um that would clean things up if they are wanted to be a, a vote um to create a new name and uh say that we're doing it in conjunction with the town as a joint committee that was sort of button up everything at the same time okay I guess, Eric, we're back to number one and back to the both boards, I assume, right? I think so. I guess I'd open it up to at least select board members. Any comments? Doug? Well, I'm, I'm a big believer in social justice. Um, I'm worried that it opens up to uh, what I would consider economic justice and the the one percent movement. Uh, I, I don't know where you want to target this, um, and it, it's. Uh, uh, I think we should define if it if it's uh, the issues that Kyle has raised. To me, social justice is much broader than than the recently you know uh, brought forward and and deservedly so gender and and uh racial issues that think that you talked about social justice is much broader i think that we need to define what this is 
uh, if we're going to use that term. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to define that. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm, you know, if you, if you really kind of dive deep in what intersectionality theory asserts it's that all people you know that people are often disadvantaged by multiple sources of oppression of oppression it's not just their race but it's also their class their gender identity their sexual orientation their religion so i think that um that this committee um should be given you know um uh, given the green light to Look at all those different dimensions when when um, thinking about you know moving equity issues forward. Doug, frankly, it's it's impossible to talk about one without talking about the other. <laughs> I'll just put it that way. <laughs> and if you're a person of a col if color, if you're a woman, if you're gay, you know this. You know this is this is not this is not this is not. Uh, rocket science here <laughs> well i think that uh, you know from my experience you you know you would add foster kids to this what you know what? What? sorry foster kids to this you know pill, you, you know the family is such an important building block in the absence of good building blocks so i mean so that's my you know that's why i have a definitional issue and and uh you uh, I'm with you on all of the other stuff, but I'm just trying to figure out, uh, I, I don't know why we would leave them out. And I don't know, you know, there, there was nothing in the papers recently, you know, uh, where there's a focus on, on people who do not have the same advantages as I had growing up of a solid family or, or the resources, you know? Uh, so I just think that, uh, you know, foster kids are a good are a good example. We do certain things for them, but you know, you watch them end up in jails. You watch them end up elsewhere. So I, I'm just trying to focus the committee. You know, I'm not opposed to to uh, it, it, it's uh, you know, I, I just throw that out because I I, I want to, it to be defined well. Would social justice not capture the foster kids? Well, I, I think it would, but I, I, I don't think that that's anywhere within the uh, thought uh, pattern um, unless the foster kid was gay or, you know, some other, you know, colored, some, some other category, you know? I don't think that anybody is thinking in terms of family background and, and what is provided to kids or, or, or adults, elders, you know? I don't mean to hijack the discussion. Um, <laughs> I'll let, yeah, I'll let other people chime in before I chime in again too. Yeah. <laughs> really looking for board members before we open it up to the public. Um, I mean, we can open it up to the public, I'm sure we'll get Plenty of comments from there, but. So Eric, just a housekeeping question again. Can trustees chime in or do we wait? No, go ahead. Okay. Please. So for the social justice committee, um, I totally get it, but I also hear where Doug is coming from. So like something is needed for conversation for economic disparities is that part of this is housing disparities part of this and i'm a little worried about not having um, some bookends on the topic and which way this committee is headed um, i think when we when we spoke about it <clears throat> we were worried about racial issues and that's why we push for the committee. Um, so if housing and economic parity is, is part of it, and you know, I, I could come up with another dozen pretty quick if you want me to. And is it gonna sort of 
take away from the urgency for racial justice, which should be our key priority right now. Those are my comments. Athena? Uh, and can you guys hear me? Yep. Not very well. Quiet, but... Okay, I'll try to talk closer. Um, so I just wanted to say that I, I love the idea of broadening the committee because when I think about this committee's function um, sort of going forward in the world and, and hopefully in the future there will be other movements um, as, as big as what's happening right now to um, address all of um, you know the inequities that are in the world and so maybe broadening that definition will allow us um, to bring more things to that committee but then again I think do we want this to be a blanket committee and do some of those issues deserve their separate committees is this something that we should consider down the road um, I guess I'm I'm sort of with Scott where I totally like hear and and understand like wanting to think about the future social justice movements that will totally happen and, and will be relevant. Um, but then again, are we then sort of making it a blanket committee? Are we maybe potentially throwing too much at this committee in the future? I don't know. Brian? If, if the other board members, if, um, are done for a minute. I guess I'm going to ask all of us, and we aren't all going to agree to this, but what brought us here? Why are we here? Why do we want to form a committee? What are some of the instances that have been brought up to say, let's get a community of all the people, not just five board members or the other five board members to, the, to, to take a vote on some, something that is has such a significant impact on all of our members in our community, very strong and very divided. So Scott and I have had some discussions, both publicly and privately to where, and I'm speaking for myself from here on, but we'd like to see if you, if you narrow the scope of this up, you might get something done and get all the community involved in it to where we, we could come up with some kind of an agreement because if we, open us up too far, we won't come to any conclusion. We're gonna get bogged down and we won't, we won't have any resolutions on whatever it turns out to be. So those are my thoughts. I, uh, I really like the idea of calling it a social justice committee, um, just because I'm wary of the, the bookends and I don't think this is something, social justice doesn't need bookends, you know, to, to steal your term, Scott. Um, but I, I think that, you know, they can still have a focus and they can still work on an issue. And that's, I think a lot of those same issues, a lot of the same people are going to want to be involved. Um, and obviously we can bring on more people into the committee as well. I don't know how many members or what we agreed on, but, you know, I think a, a name can be sort of, um, can be the book and, and I know that's what you might want, but I don't think that this topic in justice really has one or any. Um, so I think that we can, we can still move forward with guiding the agenda of the committee and what they're trying to do and accomplish and maybe, you know, set goals for the committee, but to, to name it something that is open, you know, we, I think that's pretty helpful in this situation specifically. Kyle? Yeah, I, I agree with, I, I like what you just said, Brian. I also, what, what if we called it social justice and, and I actually, I think this is what I said, this like we're meeting in retrospect, social justice and equity issues committee. So uh, it can encompass potentially some of what you were talking about, Doug. Um, and again, just broaden, um, broaden, the scope of work, not 
not to uh, dilute or overwhelm, but because I think that, I think, um, I know for myself when I'm, um, when I'm learning, listening, researching about, um, about these, you know, uh, social justice issues and whatnot, it, it's, it's, yeah, you, you really, it, it's, it's not compartmentalized like that. You've got to be able to be able to uh, speak about other, other, um, yeah, other identities. Um, we know, I mean, it's, it's fact that um, more black girls are suspended from school than white girls. It's not just a gender issue. It's not just a race issue. You know, it's, 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 um, it's both of those things that um, compound. So I think it's really important that we, that we don't um, narrow too much. Um, I'll just say I appreciate um, the reframing of it, Kyle, because for some reason the word equity really, I think, rings true to what the definition is supposed to be. And, and like as I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking about the idea of bookends, because I, I do think obviously some guidance and structure would be important, and maybe that just comes in the mission statement of the committee, mm -hmm. which we're going to talk about later. So. Are there, if there are any other board member comments, we can take those now. Uh, but it looks like we do have some public comments also. I think Nat would like to say something. Okay. Quickly, I, I don't have a strong feeling about the name of the committee. I do like having equity in there. I also like it to be a focus on inclusion, equity and inclusion, I think is really what this is um, driving at. And I, I do also think starting modestly, um, getting the modest goals into place, and then potentially expanding to see where we go is uh, maybe is a possibility instead of starting very ambitiously. Let me just throw this out. Um, if there's an interest in the two boards to form some kind of a committee, what if we left it up to the membership to come up with a name? That's a great, that's a great one, Eric. It's all about community, right? Supposingly. Great idea. Um, well, I guess, Gordy, how do we move forward here? We're eventually going to have to open up to the public, but do we want to take motions on each of these questions or try to lump it all together? which might be too big a bite. Hmm. Good question. Um, the mission statement had a former committee. They overlap each other, as one of the members just said. And I liked your idea, Eric, of instead of us trying to beat this to death, the 10 of us, and we can also hear from the public, but we can, let's see what the committee comes up with, whoever they are. And then, Maybe we can vote on the first two, how's that sound? Then the last two, we could have a general discussion and maybe we can give the advice, but uh, see what the committee comes up with. That's true, the last two are sort of related and the first two are sort of related. Mr. Chairman. Mike. I believe the first thing the select board has to do is agree to have this committee. Yep. So why don't we do that? I'm looking for a motion. You have it. <laughs> so exactly what's your motion? Well, the, the name has been changed, uh, or the thought process of the name has been changed, so I don't know exactly how to, how to word it, uh, but maybe somebody could give me a hand on this. If it doesn't really have a name, uh, how do we go forward? Yeah, uh, Eric. Kyle. Go yes, ahead. Yeah, I'm a little wary about not giving it 
a name one because it's now impossible to make a motion <laughs> um and two when we're i think it's a i think the ident the name gives it identity which gives us clarity on the mission and who we're going to who would want to be on this committee and who would we, we'd want to a point so i'm i'm a little wary of this idea of just letting it sort of like float and be whatever and i don't know i um i'm wary of this idea i think it could get muddy i think it could get very ambiguous i think we'll all be saying uh floundering here with just in terms of what this committee is about and i think it's really important that we have we have clarity on what that is before we uh, um, create a mission statement and appoint people to this committee. <laughs> um, so I, 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 I'm, I'm personally very much liking the idea of, of social justice and equity issues committee. Are you so moving? Yes, respectfully, Mike. That's okay, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna recognize Kyle's motion because Mike's was not defined. Ms. Gress. Um, there is a motion on the floor. Kyle has made it. Is there a second on the select board? Come on, guys. Lacking a second, the motion will die. The motion's died. Uh, I'm still looking for direction from the select board. What's your pleasure? Have we just lost Nat's video? Is he still there? Uh, he's unmuted. Nat, are you still there? Okay. So we may have lost Nat again. He may very well have uh, seconded that. We should get him back. Yep, now he's actually gone. Okay. Um, and as far as in the village side, you did not have, or do, what did you have for a name of this committee, or was there ever a discussion of that? Meredith, could you find the motion? Would you be able to look it up in a minute? Yeah, I'll go um, pull the minutes. I, I believe we refer to it as a racial justice committee, but I will go and pull the minutes to be sure. Okay. Mike? We could uh, make the motion uh, to have the racial justice committee, but uh, the name could be changed by the committee if they so desire. I think you're right. They could come back to the two boards. Um, any decisions would have to be made by the boards, but yeah, that's correct. Right. Yeah. So in that case, uh, we'll wait till Nat gets back to see what he wanted to do. But if he is not, uh, if he didn't second it, I'll just make that motion. Okay. Nat that way, that way we get it moving forward. Nat, Carl had made a motion to form a committee and it would be called the racial justice equity committee. Uh, there was not a second. Is that something you would entertain seconding? The motion died without your second. I don't have a strong feeling about what we should name this. Okay. If, why was there not a second otherwise? I see your hand, Offie. We're going to hold back on public comment for a little while. But we'll eventually get to you guys. I would like to get a motion on the floor, then we could open it up for public comment. I move that uh, the town uh, form a uh, racial justice committee. And, we have a uh, motion. Is there a second? I'll second that. There is a second. Okay, and this would match up Meredith with the village's name. I'm still looking. <laughs> I'm almost there, I think. Gordy, do you want to open it to the public or? Sure, we've, we've, uh... well, I guess you've got some trustees that still want to speak. 
Plus, I guess Meredith recommended that we should revote this as a joint effort with a motion and a second. So you would want to make the uh, a mirror? Yeah. Okay. I think Nice if we could have the same motion as a select board and then turn it to the public. But if Meredith, I'm sure she'll find it in just another few seconds. This is like going to the dentist there, pulling teeth. Yeah, I think Jenna wants to <laughs> pipe in. Um, I was just wondering about um, the News and Citizen article that appeared, and um, I can't recall if there was an actual label for the committee in that article. I think there may have been. So I just wanted to make sure that that would tie in as well. If if they had referenced it with a label, it was something that had not been officially identified yet. Okay. Thank you. Can I say something about this? Go ahead. Doug. My, you know, I, I've sort of thrown this into a a maelstrom. Um, my my thought was that um, social justice is a much broader concept. It wasn't, it, you know, I don't disagree with Kyle that 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 there are multiple involvements, but I just don't think that social justice is listen, is limited to gender. You know, it's um, it, it, it it has a lot more problems to it. I just thought that uh, I, I don't have a problem with somebody proposing that we address the things that. Kyle was saying are in involved in what she considers social justice. I just don't think we should name it a social justice committee. Okay, Mike. Answer that question. It said Johnson seeks volunteers for racial equality group. Okay. That's what it said. But that again, article, that article was riddled with um, incorrect things <laughs> well we're not here to discuss that tonight i don't no, think we're, try we're trying to get uh, the racial uh, justice committee going I'm just saying here. that jenna a jenna asked if that was if i understand uh, but we had uh, what the paper says is immaterial really uh, this is the town of johnson and the village of johnson and we're going to decide what the name of it is ourselves yeah. without being driven by a newspaper and uh, so my motion still on the floor mr chairman of uh, yes. of uh, having a racial justice committee as it is written in our paper for tonight's meeting and the the committee itself if they feel so inclined they can change the name uh, i don't see what the big issue is i think we should move forward and not study this to death meredith did you find that i did um it probably muddies the waters, unfortunately. Um, I'll read the motion that was passed. Um, it said, Scott moved to form a committee of both town and village residents to discuss placement of the Black Lives Matter flags on village property and to have a recommendation within six months. Um, and then Gordy seconded it. Um, and there was a discussion about trying to have people um, on both sides of the issue. Um, so it does not look like we ever gave it a formal name. Um, I think we threw that term around, but that was not part of the motion. Um, and the motion passed uh, three to two. Um, so I think if, with that information, it would be wise for us to both adopt a similar name. You agree, Gordy? I do. That sound. I agree. If we can get you guys to make a motion in a second, and then if we can get the trustees to make the same motion in a second, then once the trustees have spoken, then see what the general public says. Okay, the, the town has a motion in a second right now to uh, call it a racial justice committee on the floor. So it's it's all over to the trustees. Okay. <laughs> can I make a quick clarification? Go ahead. Is that motion? for a joint committee, Mike? Well, yes, I mean, that, that was just kind of the assumption uh, that it, it would be, but I guess it probably should be spelled out and to be clear. Uh, is, so is that a friendly that, amendment to you, yes, Mike, to yes. add a joint committee? Yes. And, and friendly amendment to the seconder? Yes, I, mean, I, have, that, I have that question too. So I okay, would okay. So, 
Gordy, there is a motion and a second on the floor from the select board. Do I, can I get a motion and a second from the trustees? I'll make a motion for the same motion that Mike gave. Second. We have a motion and a second. Thank you. And now I guess Eric and Mary and Brian, we can open it up to the public, correct? Before we vote. We're all set with board comments. Perfect. Okay. Uh, I'm turning chat back on now. And uh, I appreciate uh, those of you that had your hands up earlier. I saw Offie, Carrie, and uh, uh, Beth, I think, was the other one. Um, yeah, and, uh, Carrie, I think you were up first. Do you still want to speak? I'm going to go ahead and ask you to unmute. Can you hear me, Brian? Yes, I can, Carrie. Thank you. Thank you so much for, um, for giving me space. Um, I'm in strong support of forming this committee. Um, whatever we call it, I think um, we can work out exactly what we would be focusing on or have, what we would want this committee to focus on in the mission. Um, but however we slice it, I really think that we need to make this committee and I strongly urge everyone to uh, see this through, please. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Beth, you were, I think you were up next. I'm going to ask you to unmute if you want to speak so. Hey, go ahead. Uh, I'm not hearing you if you're commenting. I think you unmuted me instead. No. Oh. Can you hear me now, Brian? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, so I just had a couple questions. Um, and by the way, I'm fully in support of this committee also. Um, but my first question is, you know, in terms of defining what the committee is and what the focus is and what the name is, um, I think that it would be helpful to understand if the intent is for this to be a long running, in other words, never ending committee versus a short term with a very specific objective. Um, by the way, I would be, would be in favor of a long running committee. And if so, I think that um, not putting strong books, bookends on um, what the objectives are would be really important. Um, and I would just say that each of the boards could task the committee with a very specific objective um, and when the board, you know, does their work and feels like they're at a point where um, they've delivered to meet the objective, there could be a new objective introduced. Um, that way it does account for all of the different areas where equity um, is current and currently an issue in our community. Um, so I just wanted to share my thoughts on that. Thanks. Thank you, Beth. Thank you, Beth. All right, Offie, I had you up for, so I'm gonna ask you to unmute if you'd still like to speak. Uh, it looks like you're still on mute. Yeah, we cannot hear you, Offie. Offie, you're gonna have to hit a, hit a button on your computer to unmute yourself. No, I, I I'm sorry, I, I can't do that. I'm going to give you a second to, to look for that. Uh, you got to find the unmute button. But in the meantime, uh, I've got uh, Greg Tatro has asked a comment and then and then we'll circle back with you in just a minute, Alfie. Okay, go ahead, Greg. All right, folks. Um, I'm thinking about what Kyle was saying, and I'm, I guess this may be kind of a question, uh, but would that include, you know, Johnson has, I think our poverty rates around 20% from the figures that I've heard. Um, and, um, and I'm not sure uh, if this, her uh, naming would include these folks. Um, 
Also, people with substance use disorder are uh, uh, not treated fairly either, uh, not given a chance, similar to uh, a lot of what this is all about. So, uh, Kyle, I don't know if you can answer that for me. Yeah, Go ahead, yeah. yeah I'd be happy to if we, thanks, Greg. Um, if we included social justice and equity issues um, as the name, equity definitely doesn't focuses on socioeconomic status for sure, um, as well as um, yeah, as um, many many other things. So it's a it's a pretty broad term, but definitely would include. Some, if not all of that, I, I would, that's, that's my interpretation of the definition. Mm -hmm. And I think that if that's the case, I would be inclined to go along with what you're saying, because I think it's a broad group of people in our town, um, no matter what color you are, your sexual origin, or whether you're a substance use disorder or many other things, could be veterans that are struggling. Um, I, like, I like that idea. I think it's a good idea to, but um, it does, like Scott said, it does open it up pretty wide, and you'd need a you'd need a pretty good group and a good uh, moderator to stay focused on certain things each time. <sighs> but uh, but I there is a lot of there's a lot of poverty in town, and I don't know if it's addressed the way we should be addressing it. So I think I would be in favor of going more with, with, with what Kyle has to say, but, but thank you guys. And, uh, you know, it's a great, great conversation and, uh, you know, hopefully we can, uh, help some people. That's the goal. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. I believe Offie's on now. I'm ready. Can you hear me now? We can you hear can... you now. Thank you, Offie. Oh, great. <laughs> okay. I almost forgot where I was. Um, okay. Uh, I've been in Johnson over 10 years. Okay, I came here um, oh, way back to teach at Johnson State. I taught at Johnson State in a couple of years. I taught uh, psychology, sociology, criminal justice. I've also taught the same thing at Rutgers, Temples, Antioch College. And I've also been in a lot of town meetings like this, okay? Uh, I was invited to join this tonight by Doug, or by, by Mike, okay? And my first... Uh, reaction was, what is the meeting about? And he told me, you know, racial justice committee. I said, well, why? You know, I mean, I've been here 10 years. I've never had any problem. I've never seen any problem in Johnson. I love Johnson. I could have lived anywhere literally in the world. I think Johnson, Vermont. I have not, had no problems here. So I don't know what kinds of problems or why people even are want to form this committee. That's, that's my first question. And if you want to answer the discussion, uh, about things in the community, you know, there's a lot more things I think important than a racial justice thing. How about social justice, you know, uh, unemployment, uh, people who are homeless, you know, people who need food. And if there are some racial problems, fine, but just don't focus on racial justice, you know, widen the whole thing up so we can have a community-wide meeting about anything where there are some serious problems. Not just where one or two people have a problem, but where there's really agreement that we have some problems. I see absolutely no, personally, racial problems in Johnson. I've been here 10 years, maybe I've missed them, I don't know. So that, that's my point of view. I mean, I'd be very willing to join in discussion groups on anything in Johnson, anytime. If there's a real problem, show me the problem, okay? That's Thank you, Alfie. Thank you, Alfie. Do All we right. have anyone else, Brian? Uh, yeah, we've got uh, Alex Sellers up next. Okay, Alex, go ahead. Hi. Um, can everyone hear me? My internet's kind of wonky. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Um, so there was a few things that thought I thought of. I completely agree with... Yeah, we might be losing you. Yeah, see, I'm sorry if that happens. I was concerned about that. Um, 
I like the idea of it being something that's a little bit broader. And I also liked what um, Brian had said that social justice doesn't really have bookends. If the idea is to address equity and um, problems of having a committee that focuses on that, but that isn't um, placed into too much of a box where it's like, well, that's not my problem to take care of that. Instead, the idea is to come out and support um, the other two things I want to just touch on with this committee is making sure that, you know, a lot of us and the majority of the people I think involved are coming from a white perspective, um, wanting to create this committee. And so making sure that we just check our perspectives and the way we go about doing that, I think is just really important. Um, and also that going forward with this committee to, I think it would be a good idea to reach out to other organizations that specialize in this work rather than just kind of going into it blindly. Um, Showing Up for Racial Justice is a um, national organization, but they have a Burlington chapter and they have trainings that actually train you in racial justice and how to call people in rather than calling them out. Um, there's also the Lamoille County Racial Justice Alliance. So they're also, I think I would recommend reaching out to them as well as far as doing local work if this is something you want to look into just to make sure um, that all different perspectives of our community are being seen as well. Thank you, Alexa. All right, Shane. Okay. Hey, thanks. Um, so I actually, I agree with, uh, with Kyle's idea of broadening the scope of this. I think, um, you know, just keeping it to racial justice is something that uh, we're never going to run out of work to do, but it is something that is a little limited and does close off other very important topics to talk about. Um, I do think that the notes, uh, the points that others have brought up about overwhelming the committee might be something to, to keep in mind. And um, and I guess this is a question for everyone uh, here is, how do you envision things coming to this committee? Is it the committee would come up with their own action items and, and things that they would pass on to you? Or is it maybe, you know, the select board or the trustees hears some concern or some proposal and passes it off to the committee? Because um, I think the difference between those two, one of them allows the select board to, or, you know, and the trustees to have some kind of input on the direction of the committee. The other, if you, if you just open it up and, you know, and, and let them do what they want to do, there might be a lot of different things that they want to focus on and it might make it difficult to get any one thing done. Um, so I, I think the, how the committee is formed and what it, uh, what the scope is, is kind of dependent on, on that question as well. Thank you, Shane. Are there any other, anybody else who wants to speak? Are you asking any of the public? Well, Still if uh, board members have uh, comments also, we can. Uh, but I've got a couple of comments in chat if, if nobody has anything. Okay, it looks like Alfie, you would like to speak again. So if we've gone through everybody. All right. I have a. Go ahead, Doug. The the ills in Johnson are have been studied and and are very clear. Uh, Greg is Greg is correct uh, on the area that he knows so well, the housing and the economics, the the status of our uh, the condition of our housing, the the uh, income of our people. It's uh, it needs uh needs a tremendous amount of, of, of attention. Uh, part of that is kind of the mission of, uh, of the select board and, uh, and of economic development. You know, I was, you know, I, I'm, that, truthfully, I'm in favor of a committee that looks at Johnson and turns us inside out and says who we are. I just didn't think that the direction that the it, it seems to me that the direction of social justice was more limited to the 
the gender issues and, and racial uh, and didn't go out as broadly. And I didn't know if they really, I just wanted a clear definition of what it is. We, we started to talk about, you know, what, what the income of our people are and uh, how hard a life they have and what we can do for them. Is that really where we want them to go? Uh, I'm, not a, I'm not at all opposed to, to uh, going there, but it's a completely different committee than I came in thinking where people were, were going. Thank you, Doug. Okay. And Thank Avi you. had wanted to speak again? Yeah, can I say something? Yes. Uh, I didn't get any reaction at all from anybody, anything I said, uh, but I'll say it again. I don't see any need for a committee on race and justice. And um, if somebody can tell me why we need to spend time talking about racial justice in Johnson rather than all the you know, socioeconomic problems that you just heard about a minute ago, you know, poverty, unemployment, they had schools, you know, we're at the bottom of the rank in schools in the state, you know. We have some serious problems there in Johnson. Uh, so why, why is somebody still pushing about the racial thing. I don't understand it. Where's it coming from? All right, I saw Scott with your hand up. I don't know if it was you were raising yeah, to answer it off. It was. Thanks, Brian. So, Afi, thanks for your um, comments. There have been a few flare-ups, and I think the studio center had some students who were called out based on their race a um, year and a half ago, which was really unsettling. Um, that's the two that I'm aware of. And there seemed to be a huge amount of dialogue over the past six months on, you know, racial disparities um, within the community and their concerns on it. <clears throat> but as far as, you know, the facts and figures go, um, I think of this as sort of elusive. Um, there's some undertones going on, and like I said, the studio center unfortunately had a couple of um, call-outs due to some of their students, which was really unsettling. Um, those are the ones I know about, and for me, two are too many, based on um, race. Thanks. Okay, I had a couple people who wanted to comment. Uh, Athena? Yeah. Um Thank you, Afi, so much for your comments. Um, based on your personal experience, I guess I can say like I'm I'm grateful that is something that you have not experienced in this town, and, and I love that we can all share our love for this town. And unfortunately, um, I I think also like Scott have have heard of a number of aggressions, both sort of um, like you know outward sort of you know being called horrible names on the street, but also um, aggressions that are sort of um, smaller and, and not necessarily inherently violent in the moment, but sort of make people question whether or not they are truly safe in various communities. And so I think for me, how I see like one of the biggest important parts of the committee is, is how can we educate folks? I don't think anyone um, in these sort of micro settings intends to really cause harm. And I think education can really address that. And so that is where one of the main focuses I see this committee going is how can we um, educate our town to not hurt other people either intentionally or not. Can I say something? Hello, am I on? Yes, yeah. still on. Okay, okay. I, obviously being a black person, person of color, whatever, uh, and living in about 30 different, 20 different cities in this country, um, I've been called things, I guess, as a, from a child where I grew up in a predominantly white community, uh, all the way, you know, through. Um, the way I've seen it handled and the way my family, whatever, you, the person who said it, okay, we confront them, we talk to them, maybe talk to the family, whatever, and the things are usually resolved, you know, unless the person is really not easily, and, and after it was all over, everybody was friends, you know? So uh, a little bit of communication, rather than freaking out because some kid got called a name, it happens to everything else. You know, Jewish people, Arab people, whatever, you don't freak out. You get together with the people and you bring them together, whoever called the name, you talk to them, 
You talk to their parents. You have a little private meeting. This is what happens. You know, the whole town meeting because one person calls another person a name. I mean, I think it's unrealistic. It's ridiculous. I'll respond to that. Um, I, I love the idea of, of that being the way we resolve issues, honestly. Like, that, that is the ideal way. Um, I know for myself, if, if I was in the middle of that situation, I wouldn't necessarily have, like, first steps of how to start that conversation. And so that's where I think like the education component can come in is how, how do we have those, those conversations and those group meetings? I think all of the ways in which we now are used to addressing these things is like over Facebook comments, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think the committee could potentially be a place where we all relearn how to do that. Because I honestly, I love that idea of, of, of resolving issues. It's totally like, in my like nonviolent communication world, like that's totally legit. Um, but and it, I does, that with that. It, does, it does work, you know. Really, I mean, it, it does work with, with me ninety nine percent of the time, you know. And people, I believe it or not, wind up becoming friends after a while. Just a matter of communication. Thank you, Afi. Um, I would just remind the board members that we're about halfway into the time we allotted for this item. And we're still on the first part of four. Um, if there's not some new uh, things that people want to say from the public, maybe the board should consider taking a vote and moving on to the second item. Sounds good to me here. Is the board prepared, select board prepared to vote? Seeing no uh, objections, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, Mike, how did you vote? Mike, you got to unmute yourself. Aye. Aye, Kyle. How do you vote? Yeah. Um... I vote, I vote nay. Nay. Doug, how do you vote? I'm going to do a nap. I vote no. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Doug. Appreciate that. Nat, how did you vote? I voted in the affirmative. Affirmative. I'm counting two for and two against, and the chair votes affirmative as well. Motion passes. Gordy? Yep. For the same motion, I just want to read it. I'll make sure I got the wording right for what the select board just did. It would be a motion to create a committee, for a racial justice committee, and it would be a joint committee with a select board. Am I correct on this motion for wording? Yes. Yeah. All those in favor of this motion signify with an aye. 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 Okay, I'm aye. The aye. Is that all five or four? Because I don't know if I caught all five. I can't see all of you on the screen. Uh, yes, yes from Scott, Gordy. Okay. Yes from Jenna. Yes from Athena. Yes from Brian. Okay, yes from me. So you always have that. And um, if I could just jump in real, to, real quick too, to um, sort of honor some of the citizens of our community and um, Kyle as well. Um, we should be all ears of the committee when they are gathered together wants to change their name that we should um, hear it out and do what's best. Thanks. Thank you, Scott. Yep. Thank you. Uh, second item was should we should we provide a mission statement and if so uh, what would that might look like? Nat? My internet's very unstable. I've been and out, so be it. Um, the Vermont League of Cities and Towns um, put together this municipal engagement, this document, Municipal Engagement for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. I um, 
circulated around to both boards uh, this weekend. Um, they did this. Um, community partners, including the National League of C Cities uh, Racial Equity. Um, uh, Susanna Davis from the Office of Vermont Office of Racial Equity was involved along with uh, the Vermont Council on Rural Development. They put together 12 ideas, suggestions for what a community can do to advance um, engagement for diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, I think there are about 12 things that they've recommended maybe 11 things. So my recommendation for the charge for this committee would be to go through this document um, and prioritize these, these suggestions. Some of them will be relevant to Johnson, others won't be. Um, some of them they might find very important, suggest that we, they might prioritize less and say maybe we do that a little later on. But it, it um, I think is inclusive, uh, really, is good at um, pinpointing areas of policy in a municipality where um, these issues can can come up. Um, and so I would suggest that this be the, the primary goal, initial goal of the committee. Also, not just limited to these 11, but also coming up if they have 12, 13, 14, 15, whatever other ideas present those as well. Um, so that's my, that's my suggestion. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so Nat, thanks for looking all that stuff up. It was needed to have some type of roadmap. Um, I think it would be great if both boards could just jump into it. Um, hopefully, you know, this week to try to digest some of it and maybe um, start sending some emails back to Brian and Meredith and Gordy and Eric CC'd with um, comments on where we should go with that. So thanks for the legwork on that. Sure, I guess I'm suggesting that that be the work of the committee. Yeah. Okay. Any trustees want to speak? In terms of the mission statement? Yes. Um, I agree with Nat, and I also think it may be, I guess, yeah, I agree with that, and with the emphasis on um, the committee being able, being flexible in the sense where they can add things and prioritize things as they, as they see fit. Uh, Brian, didn't you, you, you wrote a bit of a mission statement already, didn't you? I did. Um, I tried to keep it, it it's in your packet. Um, it's pretty light. Uh, for the most part, I wanted, uh, I wanted the committee to do some of the work. My vision was for this, based on our prior conversations with the select board, was a little bit like Nat, that we should give them some, you know, a, a very light roadmap, but they should tell us more about what they were going to do with it. Uh, so, uh, you yeah, know, we can use that one. We can make some modifications to it, uh, whatever, whatever you all think is appropriate. Hey, Brian, would you be willing to read that so everybody can hear it? Sure. I don't have it in front of me. Or maybe doing a screen share would. Yeah, let me. I'll, I'll share the screen. Uh, give me a second to grab this up. I can come second night. All right. So, uh, and this was written. Well, this needs a little bit of revision to thoroughly integrate the village, the, the joint nature of the committee. I did a, a, a pass integrating the village a little bit, but not fully. Uh, so whereas the town and village of Johnson have adopted an inclusivity statement and whereas the town of Johnson 
has participated in trainings to better understand bias and its effect on individuals, whereas the town of Johnson has made a statement in support of anti-racism. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town of Johnson and the village of Johnson trustees, uh, volunteers and a moderator will be sought to serve on a racial justice committee to provide recommendations to the town of Johnson select board on educational opportunities, public displays, policies and procedures, and coordination with local partners and stakeholders to further the cause of racial justice. <clears throat> so that's kind of our out, the outline I had drafted to get us started with something to work on. So Brian, would it be possible to add maybe a few more bullets to um, add concerns that Kyle had and Greg had um, as part of this? Because now what I'm seeing here is we're in a pretty tight place. And if we are looking at things for social justice and, you know, potentially renaming this committee down the road, it's left out. Yep. So um, Kyle, since you brought it up and Greg, you had really good insight for the other demographics of inequality in our community, you know, I'd love to hear from both of you on what those bullets should say. If you don't mind being called out. Wouldn't be the first time, would it? No. Well, Mike, I was gonna ask you, but then I said, nah. <laughs> uh, so if I can, my first thought would be Uh, changing racial justice, if we so wanted, we could change that to social justice. Uh, we might call that uh, justice and equity. Um, you know, we could get do a little bit of wordsmithing, but I, I'm I, there's a lot of opportunity for for that, and we can do as much of that as you want here in the meeting. Uh, but I can also consult with folks. Uh, offline for uh, that kind of perfect wording. Um, I, I, I don't. I, I don't think I'm looking for perfect wording. But since we have the community, um, you know, at least thirty of us during this meeting to add a few bullets on this document, it doesn't have to be perfect. But uh, I'd like it opened up a little bit. Sure. Mm -hmm. Um, let me see here. Well, I guess what was important to me was also what I mentioned about the intersectionality. So just um, acknowledgement and a, and a understanding that um, that when we're speaking about racial justice that we consider everything and anything that can marginalize people. So whether that is, you know, um, gender, race, class, sexual orientation, physical abilities, religion, that kind of thing. So, um, so that, that was the part that was most uh, um, important to me. Um, and how to put that in a bullet point, I'm not pre quite prepared to do, but um, but I guess just understanding that, you know, um, that, that um, often, you know, race isn't just compartmental. I like that, that we, we look at the intersectionality of, of uh, of different identities. Um, so Kyle, on the bullets, in, for like the first one, uh, racial mm -hmm. slash, sl <clears throat> slash um, social justice, and just go all the way through. And that would open it up a little bit. 
Mm -hmm. And I'm interested in yeah. hearing what um, Greg, if he's still online and not muted, um, if that would incorporate um, the other concern in our community on, um, you know, sort of the, the whole, uh, you know, drug use um, falling into that trap, um, which is, you know, brutal to the families and to the person as well. I'm um, falling into that. Um, so Greg, if you're on, I can't see you on my screen. I'd like to hear from you too. Well, thank you, Scott. Yeah, um, the little story I got to tell you about Jenna was she went to apply for a job. She really nailed the interview. And on the way out, they said, we're not going to hire her. She's a drug addict. So mm, there's a lot of stuff like that going on, as well as people of different color than white. Um, so I think the poverty thing in town, if we can somehow figure out a way to lift these people up and give them some hope, that might reduce our dependence on drugs. Because um, that's really, a lot of it comes from that. Now, Jenna was a different situation, obviously, and it does affect every, all families, there's no question. But, um, you know, substance use disorder, and that's one of the things that Jenna's Promise is really trying to um, bring out into the public. Because when these folks are in recovery, they're no different than any one of us sitting here right now. And I do think that there's discrimination there. Um, so I think there's, like I saw Jackie posted something about some folks from Iraq that, you know, really, really makes you, really almost makes you sick. You know, there's no reason for that. Um, old people sometimes, you know, they, they're discriminated against, you know, they're just old people. And there's just so many people that need a group like this to say, you know what? let's try to help some folks. Let's try to do something different than we have been doing. So um, that's why I kind of wanted it broadened. And I think a good piece of it can be on racial injustice, uh, you know, people of color or from different countries, absolutely. But I also think this, if we bring more people into this, I believe that more people from their community will be involved in maybe um, Athena mentioned education. It might be a good stepping stone to educate more people in the town, uh, give us a chance to work with them. So I, I guess that's what I have to say. And again, this is a great conversation everyone's having and uh, very proud of this town. Thank you. So it, it just, you know, an idea, do the racial um and social justice just all the way through to try to broaden it a little bit and capture some of the comments that have come in tonight yeah i'll, I'll try and you know assuming the you know we make a similar the boards give me that direction that's kind of i i i, I can do that i can uh broaden these a little bit to try and cover uh what we've heard it uh from Kyle and Greg and uh, quite a few people in, in chat and publicly about wanting a little bit broader scope. Yeah. What's the board's pleasure? Do we want to direct Brian to uh, take this offline and try to uh, capture the things that have been mentioned? Of course. I'm hearing by consensus, at least the select board's in agreement. Gordy, do you want to poll your members? No, Gordy, you're on mute. You're going to have to unmute again. There. there you go. Now, how do you uh, board members feel? Absolutely. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Okay. I guess that's it. Yeah. General agreement. Okay, we do have a couple of couple uh, public comments uh, uh, I think on this 
Okay, let's um, open it up for the public then. Okay, so I'm turning chat back on. Can you shut off this uh, display? Yes, I can. That'll actually be much more convenient for me too. All right. Uh, so Carrie, I think you had your hand up first. Okay, go Thank ahead. You, Thank you. I was just going to suggest that perhaps um, at the end of those bullet points that you had created as a starting point for this committee, that you could maybe just add and equality. So it would read racial justice and equality because I think that at the heart, that's that's what this committee would be trying to work towards, uh, is equality for all of our members of our community. Thank you. And uh, Walter. Okay, go ahead and unmute yourself, Walter. Okay, go ahead. Uh, not really. No, I, I'm not really hearing anything. Oh, now we see him. No, we can't hear you, Walter. Eric? Yes. Uh, it's nine o'clock. I'm just wondering what you think the next 30 minutes is going to look like. Um, the next 30 minutes is uh, determining how members are going to be selected as well as a moderator. So I think we're pretty much on track. Okay, thank you. Are we set to move on to number three? Uh, oh. Unless there's any more public comment, um, then yeah, there wasn't really anything from chat. Okay, we'll move on and if, we, if Walter wants to try it again later, we'll let him jump in, I guess. Yeah, we'll circle back to Walter uh, at, at the next public comment period. So I guess the next question is, how should members be selected? <laughs> Typically, when there's uh, something like this between two boards, we've had two members of each board as part of a selection committee uh, would would uh, interview and, and do a paper cut and you know if we we're like hiring someone as a joint employee we would uh, call it down until we had three or four for the board but we could do a same type of concept with a, a couple of board members if they're interested from each board uh, taking Interview, interviewing, taking applications from prospective candidates. But it's up to this board to decide. So Eric, in, in what has been done previously, would the ultimate decision lie with the two members of two board or would it have to be approved by each board? It usually would have to be approved by the board. Okay. Um, I think we would probably go with whatever recommendation came out of that committee. Right, right, but it would still go through the, the process was my question. Yep. Thank you. But that's just someone I'm throwing out. Um, you know, somebody else may have some other thoughts on how to select members. My, Eric? Yes, go ahead. Um, yeah, I'd be open to a smaller subcommittee maybe um, sort of doing the initial um, screening, I guess, or whatever, you, or interviews, or what, whatever you want to call it. Um, for me, I feel like if someone is applying to be on what we're calling a racial um, justice, you know, committee, it's someone who is, is very committed and kind of can prove to us that they're very committed, whether that's them being present at our town, um, Townwide education programs that we've done with the Human Rights Commission, or um, 
you know, can, can talk clearly about the ways in which they are very committed to, um, to, to, you know, um, furthering racial justice. So I think it's really important that, that the folks that we do appoint are, are working for it, not against it. This isn't a place where they're kind of working out their inner demons. This is not a place where, you know, this is a place where you're already sort of there and you, in, you know, are very there and really want to further it. So I just think it's really important that that's, that's a prerequisite, so to speak. Um, that's my two cents. Just like any, you know, it's someone, it's people that are working for a, a common goal, towards a common, common goal. Yeah, I so, smile, and I would hope that I would like to that volunteers for any committee. I think probably at least has, at least is willing to dedicate a certain amount of time to that, and I think that speaks for something in our day and age when our time is very limited. So if I can chime in real quick. Um, I've had a lot of people call my home um, on this topic who were really passionate about their views. And actually a lot of them were nervous to speak up because they were worried about being called out. Um, after lengthy conversations, it was really clear to me that some of the folks don't necessarily choose the same road for the same goal. Um, so I, you know, I, I've been pushing for a very diverse group all along. That's why we need a strong moderator. Um, I, I think if you have everybody on board a hundred percent, it may not give you other ideas for getting to a place. Um, you know, I, I think people would be really surprised by some of the comments that I was, you know, sort of blessed with um, hearing what people's ideas are. Um, there was a lot of angst um, from some of the community members who called my home that the, if they didn't agree with the path, they would be, you know, called racist and sort of thrown aside and people would shake their head and walk away and that's not being community. That's being really, it, it sort of removes those folks from having conversation. So we need to walk delicately on this really, really carefully um, when we put groups together. Um, you know, doing 30 years of, you know, public health and chemical work for the state um, we always had diverse panels and groups talking about stuff to try to come to a, a conclusion to move things forward. Um, we never stacked a committee with exactly the people that we wanted to agree with everything we said. Um, you know, for some of you, I know that might be a painful comment because they're not buying in to everything and you know the exact road to get to the to where you want to be but um you know having a diverse group with like many many ideas and having a really good strong moderator i think you'll get a better a better outcome in the long run because if we have a committee that is all on board there's still gonna be a lot of community that may not agree on that path you took, and they're gonna be feel left out and angry. Um, that's what I got out of the conversations I've had with community members over the last month and a half. Um, and that's also 30 years of dealing with committees in government land. Um, so. Those are my cautions and whatnot. Anyone else? It was well said, Scott. Thanks, Mike. Kyle? 
long as I'm not cutting anyone off that wanted to speak yet. Um, um, I hear what you're saying, Scott. Um, I would respectfully disagree on a couple of things. One is, well, first I'll say what I agree with. I agree that, um, that we can have some, you know, that we can have some different nuanced positions on how to, how to um, achieve something. But with racial justice, in my mind, you're either working for it or you're working against it. I don't see sort of the middle gray area there. You're, you're either, you're either, yeah, you're either racist or you're not racist. So I feel like with this group, I, I, I don't, um, I, I don't think there'll be a need for if, if we appoint folks that are all working towards racial justice. And yeah, they might disagree about, okay, do we hire Bor Yang to do a training or do we hire someone from Peace and Justice to do the training? Like those kinds of little uh, disagreements maybe, but not, not on whether we're affirming black lives or not <laughs> in a variety of ways. So that to me, that's, that's, doesn't work for me. Um, and therefore, we wouldn't need a strong moderator. I mean, if you have a chair of a committee, they keep you on schedule, but you don't need a facilitator because there won't be those kinds of heated debates because we're the people that are on this committee are all working towards racial justice. Those are really. This is not a place for like. Yeah. Well, you know, here's a question for you. Auntie just gave his comments where he didn't think the racial justice committee was needed. So that's his opinion mm -hmm. as a person of color. Because he doesn't agree with us, does that make him a racist? Is that what you're saying? I'm, I'm not really clear on, on I, the, like. I, that, yeah, no, what I'm saying is that is that that may be his experience and opinion, and I agreed with Athena. That's fantastic. I mean, I'm I'm so heartened to hear that he hasn't dealt with what a lot of people and so many more millions of people in this country are experiencing. Um, it's the lar you know the Black Lives Matter movement is the largest movement in the world <laughs> because of systemic racism that can be dated back to you know. 1619 so and beyond you know before so I, I um, God. I don't I don't understand why we would put folks on a committee for racial justice that aren't working towards racial justice that makes no sense to me Brian, Scott is trying to speak in his mic um, yeah I'm hitting him again I'm, I'm sorry Scott I don't know where you got muted but yeah I mean well I the my thing got dropped so okay. can folks hear me now? Yes, we can. Yes. So, you know, building a community is building a community and, and trying to get people to sort of see a little bit more open-mindedly. And if we're going to be cutting people out of the conversation because they don't necessarily agree with the path that we're taking, but it, in their heart, they do feel, you know, that what's going on in this country is completely wrong and you're going to be cutting them off because they may not agree with you on how to get there. That's dividing the community. And, you know, that's called building, uh, that's a different committee. I think. I think uh, no, no, it's, it's not a, maybe, you know, if the folks who called my house, I should have given them your phone number. And they could have had a conversation with you and maybe you could, you know, think a little bit differently. Uh, I'm just really blown away that we can't have a good dialogue and conversation for moving things forward in this town. And to be stacking a committee. Who are we moving with, things forward for? We are moving things forward for people who are underserved and treated like crap, basically. Right? Color. And 
Yes, people of color, people of different nationalities, you name it. It's so all over the, the map. Okay. So those are the people that are calling you? Yeah. Yeah. Got, and just regular folks in the community. Uh, Kyle, I'm just sort of, you know, I'm, I'm not, if we're going to have a kid, we need to build the community up to embrace what's happening in, the, in this country and in our town. And the only way you're going to do that is have a conversation with everybody. That's not what a committee is for. <laughs> that is your view on that. The committees I've been on have differing opinions and we come to a conclusion um, with our, our sort of pseudo zoning that we had in our village. We had a very diverse committee get together. Those who hated zoning, those who really wanted zoning widespread throughout the town and the village. We worked out our differences and we came up with form-based code something that everybody could say, yeah, man, this is really good for the downtown area to keep our town in whole. It was a diverse committee. And there's other committees I've been on that are the same way. It's a committee. I'll let I think, I'll, I'll, I'm Brian done with my comments. I think Brian would like to speak. Yeah, I, um, I don't... I don't think that this this topic warrants walking on eggshells. You know, I got a lot of those same phone calls, Scott, and they were tough. And I pulled my truck over on the side of the road, and sometimes I was there for 15, 20 minutes. And I welcome them, and they're 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 hard, but they're welcoming. They brought me. They all ended well. They all ended very well. I'm thankful for that. And I've met people via my cell phone that I I had no idea that I lived nearby, and I've mentioned this at other meetings, and it's happened since those other meetings. And yeah, I just, I think that um, we can't walk on eggshells with this topic and we can't move forward with that attitude. I don't think I'm, you know, I, 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 I agree with Kyle in this one that we, this committee will, you know, has a, a plan and if people do get upset with it, that decisions are getting made that they might not agree with they can reach out and then the conversations can happen and that's that's okay as well it, tough conversations are okay i guess i'll if i can brian i'm going to jump in Go ahead, Gordon. We, we have an inclusivity statement we're supposed to respect all views and ideas of everyone in our community whether we agree with them or not if we can't put people on with different view, points of views this, this committee is going to be stacked all one way and it will not be accepted by a lot of the people in the community. And as was pointed out, a lot of people were against foreign based code, but everybody, anybody that wanted to either for it or against it was able to participate. And some people's minds were actually able to be changed after a good dialogue between the pros and cons of having it. So, if, and I think all people should be, be invited. There was a comment a while back that there shouldn't be any colored people on this committee, and I totally disagree. How are we as white people? We live our entire life entitlement, I guess. How can we dictate to people that walk in a different path of different uh, color than we are? That's being hypocrites. And um, we should invite everyone of all 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 ages, all sexes, all colors, all genders, and we should not be lim be limiting to one group of people or this committee that said, well, are you for against racism or are you for against all these other things? And it's a litmus test. And I totally dis disagree because that's not what our community is about. So I should look at somebody on the street and say, well, he's a friend of mine because he and I agree, but somebody across the street, that person I disagree, I'm not gonna wave or speak to him because he's quote on the other side. We need to come together. This community is very split, very divided. Businesses are leaving town, I'm on my pep talk stool now. We need to find ways to undivide our community, bring businesses back. The virus is hurting a lot of people. There's a lot of people still not working. New tax bills came out. I got mine today. I think everybody, most everybody's went up. We, we're we're self-destructing people. We need to come together and uh, work together. Thank you. That's it. Mike? You know, everybody talks about diversity all the time. That's all you hear. But 
there's no that people don't want diversity on this committee. That doesn't make any sense to me. Brian, this this is a committee that uh, you know you're you can't be for or against racial justice and still be making a you know a sane decision. I I I, I don't like that. Gordy, you just used the words, you know, for or against. Do we need people for racial justice and pe people against racial justice on a racial justice committee? Yeah. It doesn't make I mean, that, 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 that destroys the committee. You know, like that's, it's a committee for racial justice. It's not a committee to debate whether or not we should have racial justice. It is a racial justice committee. I mean, <laughs> I just feel like we're just going in circles here. It's all part of education, trying to convince exactly. people what's Exactly, Gordy, and that's what the Racial Justice Committee will be tasked to do is to be forming education, you know, um, opportunities for folks in the community that, uh, that would like to learn more about racism and systemic racism and their own bias and whatnot. That's what education is for. That's not what forming a racial justice committee is for. A racial justice committee is furthering, furthering, um, you know, for improving the quality of life of minorities and people of color, not for, not for being a therapy group for white folks. I, I, I just, I, I guess I don't understand who, I think we're talking about two very different things. Um, our inclusivity statement also states, which you left out, is that we reject racism, bigotry, discrimination, hatred and violence in all its forms. So why would we be inviting that onto a racial justice committee? That makes no sense to me. You aren't, re you aren't rejecting the other side. Never mind. Let Doug speak. But that's not what a racial justice committee does. <laughs> Go ahead, Doug. We have, a, we have a title now that, uh, for the committee, which I voted against. Uh, and the reason, because uh, when we got down to looking at, you have what Nat suggested, and then you got down to looking, uh, and there was consensus for uh, what Brian had drafted to be modified to say not only racial justice, but basically social and, and social uh, justice and equity. And so, um, my suggestion is that we have a committee. We certainly need to to interview people. We interview people. We and we show them the mission statement and say, "How would you do this? What do you see this as?" Um, and then, you know, we we uh, so we we make a decision based where the rubber hits the road and what these people say about that. And the decision, you know, uh, I recognize the problem of. Well, who is going to be doing the recommendation? Is it a rubber stamp at the select board? But I would point out that there's a difference between the title and the social justice aspect that entered into this about this community. What uh, Greg Tatro was talking about uh, with substance disorders and economics and housing and all of that, you know, we're no longer, you know, we're back where I started saying, worried about we're going to lose the racial justice focus. We left the racial justice focus even though we left the title in when we went to the consensus. So that's, that's my suggestion is that we show them the mission statement and interview them of what do they see, what do they see could be done in this community about that, you know? Can we form a, can we form a committee, everybody, and we'll let the, this committee deal with it because we've all expressed Strong feelings. We all want to. We all want to get there one way or another. Obviously, but could we kind of leave this up to the committee and let them decide how they want to proceed? Is that fair enough? Can we well, talk about who's going to be on it still, though? Because isn't that a big part? Yeah, of it? I think Gordy, we got to decide how we're going to select the members before we can have the committee do anything, and that's okay. sort of where we need to circle back to is how we're going to select. The members for this committee, um, you know, I've heard a wide range of uh, a very diverse community a committee to a, a stack committee, but we somehow got to decide whether we go one way or the other how we're going to select those members. 
Sorry, Eric, before we move on, can we stop saying stacked committee? No one is trying to stack. That just sounds very violent and horrible. And I, well, I really I'm just don't repeating what was said. That's all. Yeah, please don't repeat what was said because that's just not acceptable. Okay, if we're going to have a very diverse committee, uh, Nat, go ahead. Yeah. So, um, there are different ideas. There's been one idea suggested for how we appoint members. It's to have a subcommittee, joint committee of the trustees and the select board. Um, and then that goes to each board. I would suggest an alternative, which is that just I'll put this out there for discussion. Um, each board can appoint a certain number of members. Um, and I think that the, if I was a volunteer that was going to step forward to be on this committee and I would need the vote of approval from both the trustees and the select board, that just uh, <laughs> adds a layer of complexity that I think would be very frustrating for any volunteer. Um, so I think I, I would propose that we each have two or three members that we can appoint to this committee. So I'll, I'll, I'll throw that out there as a suggestion. Thank you. I actually like your suggestion that that would get us moving. <laughs> One, my, I appoint uh, Nat and Doug to that committee. For the select board. I'll pass, thank you. <laughs> um, my question is, is this a committee that we're going to have a equal representation or is this a committee that uh, that has a majority, you know, that, that solution doesn't lead to a majority decision. And I, I, I don't have, I, I like the idea, but I'm just pointing out, you know, a possible outcome. And maybe that's okay, you get, uh, you, know, you get two reports. Well, perhaps uh, the two boards appoint one chair. I, I'm just being creative here. Mm -hmm. um, in, in that, otherwise, there are two members from each um, from each board represented, or we could do it by population. You know, obviously, that would stack it with more. That would. Uh, <laughs> that, that would uh, allow more members and more influence from the town than from the village. Um, and I... Would look unfair, but that's what I... Couple of, couple of ideas. Now, could you say them again? Because you cut out. Um, maybe we, as two separate boards, we come together and appoint a chair, and then there'd be two members from the village, two members from the town. That would or be on the subcommittee to make the racial justice committee appointments no i'm talking about actually the racial justice committee it so could we, be would, three we would each solicit for candidates and then make the appointments is that what you're proposing that yeah okay gordy did you catch that would that be two from each if you have two from each board which i like that idea but if you have a third one from a board if you have three people you're gonna have to uh, be careful about posting the meetings for the three board members i like the idea of two and two let them decide one of the let those four people decide how to proceed let them appoint who they want for a chairperson a fifth member they would appoint a fifth member if i may i think we're we might be talking past each other a little bit uh, so, Nat, if I can paraphrase what you're saying, and please correct me if I'm wrong on this, uh, but I believe Nat's suggestion was that we wouldn't form a joint committee to select membership. 
that the select board would appoint two people to the racial justice committee directly from the select board. Not members of the select board, but members that the select board chose. And the village would appoint two members to the racial justice committee. Again, two members from the public, not necessarily two committee members or two trustees. And then at a joint board meeting, the trustees and the select board would agree on a fifth member that would serve as the chair of the uh, racial justice committee. Is that what you were suggesting now? It is. And when you repeated it back, um, the last part sounded awkward. Um, the appointing a chair jointly, that sounds a little more convoluted. But yeah, that's the idea. And Gordy, uh, I think you were coming from, we would have two members from each board or on the uh, committee and they would be forcing them to come to an agreement because it'd be we, a total number. We can go either way or suggestion, we can go with Nats also. Either way, either way works fine for me if it works for the rest of you, just to move things along here. Whatever the other board members of both boards think, I'm, I'm good with. It's board's pleasure. I, I'm, I'm wondering, I'm in favor of three appointments. You know, I'm in favor of a larger board. Mm -hmm. And I wonder what would be a quorum on the board, you know, with, with this type, you know, the usual rules of quorum would apply. Um, and, and then I, if we're a point, you could either, you could have one jointly appointed representative who might or might not be the chair. You could have the board, have the committee select their own chair, you know, either way. And I think that we ought to, uh, the, or, bo the boards collectively ought to uh, solicit and hire a moderator. Three members is better than two members. Yes, yeah, six, a six member board, I think would be better than a How's everybody Wait. else feel? I'm sorry, I have one clarification question. Would the moderator be a separate person from the six members or the four, or would it be among the four? It could be separate. Okay, thank you. And I guess I'm still confused why we would need a moderator. Why wouldn't the chair be running the meetings? Well, that's a good question. That's the question before us is, uh, would we have a moderator? Do we feel that we would need one? If we had a really diverse committee, would we want a moderator? I feel if we're appointing the right people and right meaning people that are working towards racial justice and have proved to us that that's what they're committed to doing, then I don't see why they would need a moderator. That's just, uh, yeah. So maybe you want to term it as a facilitator and a moderator. Most committees have them. I don't see why this is any different. I don't Me think neither. any of our town committees have one. We've had facilitators or moderators for joint meetings for, for joint meetings. town and billing, uh, you know, yeah, it's joint, nothing new. Joint meetings, but not committees. Yeah, form based code had a, a facilitator. That mm, I was on the board, or was, there was a facilitator that walked us through the whole process. That was an outside consultant that we hired. That's right. He wasn't a facilitator. I wouldn't call him a facilitator. So we're a little bit beyond our <laughs> scheduled quitting time. Uh, so what's the deal, Eric? Well, that's Are we going to have two, two board members from the select board and two board members from the uh, trustee board or three and three? That's what the question is. Are you two and two should be fine. 
I made a motion to appoint uh, Doug and Nat. No, no, no. This won't be select board members or trustees. Okay. This would be, we would find two members from the public that we would appoint. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm mistaken. I thought uh, Nat was talking about or, the board. Or three members, whatever this joint decision is. But, you know, I'm, I just want to try and wrap it around and uh, because we do want to open this up for public input as well. Uh, what do we think we want to go forward with? So Eric, I would say pretty easily, you'd be able to find six people in this community who would like to be um, on it. I think it's a fairly easy reach. So are you making such a mo motion on the trustee side? Yeah, sure, why not? Gordy, I'll let you <laughs> lead that. Okay. Thought you made a motion for a, on the village side for three people. Are they members at large? Community at large within a village? Yes. Okay, do I have a second? So this is for with three members a moderator and a chair. Is that what we're going for now? I'm, I'm a little. Okay. It's, isn't this just for three members to start with? Okay. I think, right, Scott? Is that your motion? Yeah, just to start with. Just to start with, there's three members from the, from the village. I'll second that. Okay, a motion is second. So now it's Eric's all yours. Would the select board entertain a mirror motion so moved mr chairman we have a motion do we have a second okay we have a motion and a second now we'd open it up for more discussion if there's any from board members or if you're prepared we can open it up for public input i just have a question clarification so would the trustees be just appointing village village only folks, and we would be doing anyone from the town, three from the town. Yes. Which includes the village. Which, Which includes, includes the village. yeah. Oh, a lot of village, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, did the, when you said membership at large, um, you did mean at large within the village, not at large within anywhere in Johnson, right, Gordy? Please, so, yes, within the village, yeah. Within the village. Okay. Is the membership prepared to open it up for the public? Yes. Public yes. input? Okay, let's go, Brian. All right, I'm turning on chant and uh, Shane, you've got your hand up first. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Shane. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll be brief. Um, I very much like the idea of doing a three and three split, uh, getting you know people from both sides. Um, but I just wanted to read a little bit from the uh, News and Citizen article about this. Um, so Brian says, we are interested in having a wide representation on the committee, Story said. He likened it to a conservation committee. There are innumerable hunters, trappers, and anglers, and pig farmers who consider themselves conservationists. There are also plenty of people opposed to killing animals who consider themselves conservationists. Ideally, a committee would have representation from both sides. Likewise, there are people whose mileage varies on opinions on things like white privilege, reparations, police defunding, affirmative action, and the meaning of Black Lives Matter. There are, however, people who wouldn't be invited to join. Quote, we would not think it's appropriate to appoint someone to the racial justice committee who is a racist, Story said. That's not something we're willing to do. So I think, you know, again, we're not, we're not taking direction from the news here, but I think that Brian laid it out very well in that article where there are, you know, a certain group of people who, if you're interested in this racial justice committee, you're probably on the right side. And I would just worry about turning people away who don't fit our personal definition of, um, you know, committed to racial equality enough. So that's all I'll say. Thank you, Shane. 
Thank you. All right, Greg, I've got you up next. All right, go ahead. Hi again. Um, I agree with Scott. Um, we should have people that challenge other people. In, in my business, I want an open door policy and people challenging my decisions because if I make them all myself, then I basically accomplish nothing. So I believe that challenge is a good thing. I think working through things, like Scott said, with the uh, zoning is, is a good thing. And the other, the other thing I believe is that nobody that's really racist is gonna join this thing anyway. You know, now you might have some people kind of in the middle that you could sway to being more uh, racially sensitive. And I think that's important because people that are don't understand Black Lives Matter or don't think it's a problem with conversation, you, you could change their minds, which means that they could change their friends minds. Right. So you know, that's just the way I feel. I like to see buy-in from everybody. You're not gonna get everybody, but you should have buy-in. And if this board is uh, kind of already has its mind made up, I mean, I understand what Kyle's saying that, um, you know, it's to, to take it to another level, I agree. But if you leave, um, if you leave the broad population behind, I, I just don't, it doesn't work in my business, and I don't know. I, I don't think it'll work here either. I think you're going to divide the community more. So, But I, uh, I think Scott's got the right idea, and uh, that's my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Uh, Rick? Okay, Rick, you'll have to unmute yourself. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay. So I'm listening to this conversation and I'm hearing about two sides. And I'm thinking that justice is a concern and a genuine respect for people. And there can't be two sides on this. It's either justice or it's injustice. There can be differing opinions, but it can't be two sides of justice. Justice is one thing, or it is injustice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Rick. Uh, Carrie, I've got you up next. You'll have to unmute yourself. Thanks again for um, the space. Um, just to kind of echo what Rick was saying and what Kyle has said, um, and what Brian has said is that you really can't begin a committee um, that has a certain common goal if the people on the committee are not all of the same thought that there's this problem that needs to be addressed, thus the goal. So there, there isn't two sides. Um, if there's a group of people uh, that are calling you, Scott, that are concerned with um, what this committee might achieve or even who might be on this committee, usually that comes from a standpoint of someone that, that stands to lose something or it feels threatened by something. And if we're talking about equality, that's very concerning. If you're thinking about putting people on a committee that is charged with raising equality in our community and they don't see a problem with inequality in our community. Um, and really, if they're not willing to work towards raising a higher level of equality for all people in the community, then maybe they're not community members, or at least members that we would want <laughs> to um, perpetuate 
<laughs> uh, those beliefs. So yes, we definitely need to work on education. And like Greg was saying, helping people understand what the issues are and what the problems are of people outside their own perspective. But that's got to be the job of the committee. And if you don't have people like-minded on the committee, you're not going to achieve anything. So if I can respond real quick, um, the conversations that I had with some of these folks, they want the same thing as everybody else. The way to get there differs. It, it's, it's not like they're not on board. They're very on board. Their vehicle of getting there is a little bit different. So does that exclude them from the conversation? No, they should apply. Well, yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. But if they're not fitting the model that everybody is sort of demanding that this is the avenue that we take only to get to the end, you're excluding them. So just to throw out a few, you know, a, a few things that had happened, um, we had talked about putting um, BLM flags up and down Main Street. And it hit the wall hard. It was my idea. And I took a lot of grief about it um, from a lot of folks. There was other ideas that were thrown out during some of these conversations. Have you thought about putting them here? Have you thought about doing uh, a park-like type thing at the Village Green? There's all these really wonderful ideas that came into conversation because we had a conversation. And what I'm worried about is if we form this committee and we exclude some folks because they have a different way of getting there, that's not okay. And there's some folks that I had spoken to and when we came down to, you know, the closing comments, they were pretty much on board. After a, a 10, 15 minute conversation, they were angry because they were left out of the conversation. And I see this happening again um, tonight. It, it, it's my opinion um, and you know people can read into it any way they want um, because that seems to be like the new the new gig in town um, this is what he's thinking ask me what I'm thinking and I'd be glad to tell you but yeah thanks for your comments but um, you know I'm not, I'm not going to enlist somebody who shows up with a, a southern flag and you know, in an armband to be on this committee because it's a waste of everybody's time. But if I have somebody who wants to be on the committee and they have a different view of how to get to the end, to our goals, I'm all ears. I want to hear what they have to say. Um, it's not side it's a conversation. Scott, I totally agree with that. Um, I think that that I think that maybe then it needs to be um, more fleshed out um, what we're talking about when we're saying um, what kind of people we're looking for for this committee because you're absolutely right there is no one way um, and every day like <laughs> i am just blown away by the creativity um, and the diversity that having that conversation can bring into our lives in so many aspects. Um, I think that the, the fear that I have personally, and I'll stop after this, um, is, you know, if we keep, we keep mentioning this article, that this very poorly written article, in my opinion, um, and the, there's so many inaccuracies in that article, but um, having people with different points of view um, as portrayed by the author of that article was only offering up um, someone who is um, who made some pretty uh, racist comments. So I think that might be the fear 
um, when we're talking about bringing diversity to the committee. Thank you for your time. Uh, Gordy, we are 20 minutes over yep. what we had dedicated for time. Um, I'm throwing it out there. The board want to cut off public comment and vote, or do we want to continue? I'd like to hear what other people have to say. Is that the consensus? Sure. I want to take a vote. Uh, now, I'm um, very much in favor of getting public input. Our meetings are also going very late lately. We've had two within the last month that have gone to 1130, which in itself is really anti-democratic and prevent means that a lot of people just can't participate in our meetings because they're going on and on and on. Um, so I, tonight, this is a great conversation. I don't want to cut it off short. Uh, short. Um, but I, I do hope we can be mindful of time. How about your other trustees? You want to keep going or are we ready to take a vote and go on to the next part? So Gordia, I wouldn't mind it going a little bit further, um, but if we can just limit maybe statements to a few minutes so we can keep things moving. All right. Okay. Which means I can't talk anymore. <laughs> so I think I've got two more public comments queued up right now. Cal, uh, if you can unmute. Okay, go ahead, Cal. Yeah, um, I'm sorry. And, you know, I just want to thank all of you for doing this because I know it's a, it's a lot. Um, so appreciation to all uh, both boards and everyone who's here. It, it is, uh, it is a, an arduous process. Um, you know, a lot's been said, obviously, uh, uh, where do I want to weigh in on stuff? I mean, I think number one uh, is I'm, I'm not even clear on, is it racial justice or social justice committee right now? I, I don't know. Either way, I see any committee that's being formed, um, uh, well, this particular committee, you know, as, as part of an educational process similar as we've done already. Uh, with trainings. Uh, I don't think anyone on this board um, will be an expert on anything. Um, I believe that it will be, that board will be, ta uh, that committee will be tasked with finding educational, uh, uh, educational um, opportunities for, for our community. Uh, like similar as we've had already um, with the Bor Yang trainings, I think that was a good beginning. And, um, you know, the bigger, um, the, the bigger thing is, uh, you know, as far as diversity, I, I totally, uh, you know, if we're, I, if we're having a rec committee, we're having people on that committee who believe in rec, in recreation. Uh, if we have to have a truck fix, we're going to go to the diesel mechanic who has some expertise. Um, I, you know, I, there's a million analogies to make, and I agree um, that any committee that's formed We'll have nuance in there. Uh, hey, who should we have to educate us? Uh, should it be this person or this person? But the but the the holistic ideals of that committee would be to further social justice or racial justice, whatever we both all of it. Like Kyle said, it uh, um, it intersects. Um, so I just want to I want to speak. You know, uh, you know, I'm in favor, obviously, of. of of these things. And I think it's an educational opportunity. People can attend or not the same way they did with the Bor Yang training. Um, certain people aren't interested in it and, you know, everyone's on their own path. I've arrived here. Um, and, and it's, a, it's, a, <laughs> you know, it's not a stellar path that I've, that I've, that any of us uh, have walked. So I don't think any of us can claim to be experts by any means. Um, and, you know, I gotta say, you know, this thing about uh, stacking a committee, you know, the elephant in the room here is we wouldn't even be here without a certain, uh, a few community members here who we all know. Um, you know, we wouldn't even be talking about this stuff. So there's people who have been doing this work uh, for years, um, like it or not, and we've been accused of ramming it down people's throats. We've been accused of having pedal to the metal. Hey, you know what? We've used the democratic, the democratic process in a stellar manner, um, in my opinion. Um, so uh, this notion of, of people forcing their agenda or stacking, 
Um, I, I understand the diversity piece, but the diversity should be around, should we have this person present or this person present? Should we, you know, and, and around those sort of things rather, you know, rather than should we fly a Confederate flag or should we fly a Black Lives Matter flag? I mean, you know, those, the, there's certain ideas that need to be left behind, you know, I'm sorry to say. And uh, it's not me to be on a high horse. I'm speaking to myself as much as anyone else here. So um, I just want to encourage folks to put the wheels on this thing. And, uh, and let's, not, let's not get hung up on details. Let's get the wheels on this thing. Let's come together as a community. There's room for everyone. If it's a social justice, equity, equity is the issue. Okay, foster kids, uh, drug addicts, whoever it is, okay, it's equity. Um, you know, racial equity, social justice, all of it. So uh, I, I just, you know, I, I just want to encourage folks to put the wheels on this thing and let's, uh, you know, and it's the folks who have attended these trainings and there's certain people out there who have more education than some of us, you know, um, on this. And so I think we should look to those folks to lead us and to keep an eye on it, obviously have some oversight. I don't see the need for a moderator. I think the chair is the moderator of a committee. Um, and uh, I'd like to leave it at that. But I really want to thank everyone for chiming in on this, especially the two boards. And uh, I respect you all. All right. Peace, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Cal. And Jackie, you had raised your hand earlier to speak. Uh, you'll have to unmute yourself. Thank you, Brian. Uh, thanks, everybody. Um, yeah. Um, you know, uh, when this uh, committee was first proposed, I was curious about it, you know, and learning more about it, talking about it. Uh, but my curiosity has has uh, gone to a concern. And the concern is because we, we keep hearing these phrases, both sides. We keep hearing these phrases, we need a strong moderator. And we're hearing that from both boards. And um, we're not recreating the wheel here. There are racial justice and social justice organizations and groups all over the state. And I can't imagine that they, when they were forming, that they sat around saying things like, we're gonna need a strong moderator. Um, and I feel that there's almost this expectation that there's gonna be all of this, like a, like a food fight and an angst, that it's almost a setup when, when, this, when people are saying these things and that you're, you're, you're putting into motion a dynamic of, uh, of this, you know? And, um, and again, with all the groups all over the state, people who join those groups or are appointed to those groups have a commitment to racial justice or social justice. They have an understanding. Um, and, and it's not being exclusive to say, um, you know, that that's an expectation of the people who would commit their time to a group like this. And so again, the, these phrases, both sides, th there are no both sides. Th there's a side, the side is people who want to work towards racial and social justice. The approaches will be different. What should we do for Juneteenth? Should we have a parade? Should we have a barbecue? Whatever. Um, but again, this, this strong moderator, we never talk about having a strong moderator for, for other committees. And it's, it's a setup, I think. And, and I've, I've been concerned about it and I continue to be concerned about it. I've heard more talk about who, how the committee should be comprised and about the strong moderator than the work of the committee. This is a success that we're right here, right now talking about this. It should be exciting and it should be a positive conversation, but instead it feels divisive and it feels like we've got to get, you know, I've been to, this is the sixth meeting I've been to on this. And we've had uh, people um, come to the meetings with different diverse ideas. One person actually talked about flying a Confederate flag at their house and, and they proposed that we fly them on Main Street. This is silly talk. And we have to cut that off, cut, boom. Um, and to entertain this, oh, we need to bring all these people in is, uh, is very frustrating to me. Very, very frustrating. So thanks for hearing me out. Thank you, Jackie. Okay, Brian, is that all the public comments? Uh, I've got a couple from chat. Uh, Are they different from what we've heard? Uh, Margo had, Margo Warden had said, uh, 
Uh, committee members should have a common goal of racial and social justice. A divergence of opinions on how to get there is desirable. Um, let's see, Rob Rodriguez has said, uh, what we really need is a how to unite Johnson committee. Um, select board and trustees are talking about one committee and other people are talking about a different committee. Um, yeah, and then uh, a couple agreements with Margo or with Scott or with uh, Jackie's comment. Well, I, I'm sorry for a brief summary, uh, but that, that, that's a okay. brief summary of, of the comments. So the motion before us is to each board would be able to appoint uh, three members to a committee. And that was second. Is, is the board prepared to take a vote? Seeing acknowledgement, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? And the ayes have it for the select board. Okay, on the Miller side, everybody ready to vote on the same motion? Hearing no comments, all those in favor of the motion that the select board just voted on, except it was say three members from within the village, signify with an aye. Aye. Those opposed? Unanimous, thank you. I believe we had an item added for some short amount of discussion on the merger question. And uh, Nat, I believe you had asked for that to be added. Uh, that was Scott. Right. Oh, Scott, sorry. <clears throat> yeah, th this is something that has been going on for a while and I think we just need it done. Um, the village has some reasons um, that I won't discuss tonight, um, but but I would like to see this be put on both the village meeting um, and the town meeting for moving this forward. And either we're going to do it or we're not. I think from the town's perspective, we had committed to bringing it back to the voters, and in this COVID nineteen time we felt that this was something that could be uh, tabled until we're able to have a, a town-wide meeting to discuss it and bring it to them. Yeah, so is that something we would be doing in the spring, hopefully? Uh, you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I get the vaccine figured out, Eric, we can Russia's do it. Russia's working on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. That discussion really needs to be informed by the report that we um, commissioned. And uh, there's the so not uh, uh, okay. The, the consultant has, hasn't corrected that report to the best of my knowledge, and I think that it's appropriate for us to put a little pressure on them to do so. Sorry, so sorry. Um, on that, Meredith, I don't know if you want to chime in because we had talked about this a little bit too. Um, we're, we're just not getting any kind of feedback from the consultant at this point. Is that right? That, that's my understanding, um, but I'm not sure that, you know, with everything else going on that we've pressed him much lately. So I think he's due for uh, a nudge. <laughs> um, you know, Brian and I both submitted uh, additional comments and corrections to him uh, in the spring. And then I don't, as far as I know, I haven't personally heard anything from him. And I don't believe Brian has either. So um, it's time to get that report finalized for sure. Yeah, I believe Meredith, you were copied on the last communication I had with him, uh, which was that he was involved with some uh, COVID-19 related consulting and did not expect to have any free time uh, immediately, but the, you know, this is a lot longer than it looked like it was going to be at that time. So what I'm wondering um, for Meredith and, and Brian, for your comments that you've made to the consultant, um, just get the report out to everybody with the village's view and the town's view of things that are a little bit misleading or incorrect and get this thing into the voters' hands so we can have a, a dialogue and get moving on this. Um, I, I just think it's, it's a detriment 
to a lot of um, our employees and managers to have this hanging over their head if they're going to have a job or not have a job. And it's painful to watch um, as an elected person because I have no skin in the game for, you know, receiving salary and not having a clear view of what is happening is not okay. And that's my personal view. I, I think this is getting to the point where it's a little ridiculous. And for the sake of our employees, we need to figure it out. No, I completely agree, Scott. Um, I think maybe Brian and I can get something out to um, the consultant this week. And if we don't get anything back, I'd say maybe by the end of next week, we can come up with a, another plan. My, my uh, preference, strong preference would be to have a plan that's correct. So, you know, people aren't looking at the plan and then having to read a separate document with corrections because I think that wouldn't be as clear for folks. So hopefully we can actually have a finished product to share with people that's correct. Okay. We have a couple, we have a, that's a real problem to keep in mind, Scott. Um, would it, is it okay with the village if this discussion on the, from the town side doesn't happen until town meeting day in March? I would say with, you know, my understanding of antivirals and vaccine development, it's going to be a while before we can get around the whole, you know, social distancing and masking and infection control policies that we're facing. Um, you know, man, uh, my fingers are crossed that we have some kind of new normal comes the spring. And, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I can't see it happening anytime sooner, but I think we should really be trying to focus on, you know, this springtime <clears throat> and, you know, hope for the best at this point. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? Well, did you have? Yeah, I had a question. Go. No, okay. I have, I have a thought. Um, <clears throat> it's not clear to me that this is totally dependent upon the what the report is. I mean, I think you've got to start with the report, but I I think that uh, if there, you know, one either side could veto if there was a, this is like a, this is like a nuptial, you know, somebody can propose and other person could say, no, it doesn't seem like a good idea to me. And I think either side could be doing that. You know, I think well, we need to get to an answer, but if it isn't clear to me that, that, uh, um, merger is, 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 is a really wonderful alternative. Right. The, the, the thing that's, like I said, is prompting me, I, I do not feel it's fair to our village employees um, that this has been dragging on for so long. Um, and if we have people move on, how are we even going to entertain somebody coming in to step into that job not knowing that they could have a job come springtime mm -hmm. it's just completely unfair to our staff um, and it bugs me um, I've, I've seen in the news that Essex and Essex Junction has moved on even with COVID trying to get this thing put to rest you know that they've been dealing with for years and years but for a smaller community um, I, I just don't think it's very fair to um, to our staff and actually you know the residents who are sort of left in alert trying to figure out what's going on we just need to deal with it thank you scott I, uh, I, that's heard loud and clear I, th I think that's an important message any other comments uh, it looks like I've got public comments, but are there any other board member comments from either board? Okay, let's open I would, up. Oh. I've got one, Brian. We're going to be looking for a new village manager, and I think Scott's right. To, if we want to bring in a good candidate, we're going to have to have the town and village merger vote. And I think everybody knows how I feel. I'm going to be a strong person to, for no merger because I want to see because we're losing a, a, a super dedicated, excellent, excellent manager, and we're gonna be on a search for another one. And before we can bring someone in, we need to have some direction on uh, where the village is gonna go. 
So those are my points. Mike? What's the reason we just can't get the uh, revised information out to people, mail it to them, and we can have a mail-in vote or something on it? We don't have to wait till next year. We can get this put to bed this year. We just barely had a uh, primary for crying out loud, and that worked fine. We, we, could move this up. we could have an Australian ballot. Why not do that? That'd be the board's prerogative. We can bring it up, Scott, at our next board meeting, to the village at least. Okay. They still work what they want, <clears throat> their decision. If we can get that finalized report, so we got something to send out, that would be uh, ideal. We have a contract. Are they violating the contract? We must. We had so many days they're supposed to give us a contract. So I don't know if they're in violation or what. But, but like Mike says, if they don't have it, we can make our own corrections. Each board can and let the chips fall where they may. Put, put it one way, one way or the other, and let's move on. Yeah, I don't believe that they're in violation of the contract. Okay. Uh, we can double check that, but I, I don't believe that that's the case. All right. Okay. Are we ready for public comment? I believe so. Okay. Uh, Rick, I've got you up. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask away. <laughs> I'm okay, actually, um, I would like to make a comment maybe under other business. It was not relevant to the subject that came up. When I raised my hand, um, I thought we were still under the previous uh, thing because we never did get around to the part about electing the moderator. So I'll let this business finish, but I'd like to be recognized when you're done with this business. This is, sort of, this is sort of other business right now, Rick, if you wanted to just have a comment. Well, I don't want to interrupt the flow of what you're discussing. The thing that I wanted to, what I raised my hand was that you weren't done. You brought up four subjects and you never did get around to the part about electing the moderator. And you're right. You're right. We did not choose to elect a moderator okay. at this time. Okay, but I want you to finish the business you're on because you've discussed it, you've deliberated it, and I don't want to interfere with that. Okay. Thank you. Um, Thank you. The good news about that, I don't see any other comments on the merger at this time. So uh, unless anybody has something they want to raise, we can answer that fourth question about um, I guess first, do we want a moderator? And if so, how are we going to select them? Right, I think the lack of an answer is an answer in itself. We've each agreed to appoint three members to this committee. That was my reading on that, was that we, uh, we moved on, but if there is some confusion about whether that was the proper thing to do, this would be the opportunity if a board member wants to uh, circle back and have a say about a moderator. Did any board member have a different uh, impression of what was being discussed? Oh, I did. Absolutely. You know, it was a separate item. It, you know, it, it, we were talking about members and appointment, and then the moderator, people discussed that. You know, we, Thank in you. terms of conversation about, in, in membership, about having a moderator, but it was never a subject that was before us. All right, well, it's 10, pa it's a quarter past 10 right now. Yep. So if we want to take that up at a later meeting, then we, we should do that. But I, I think this meeting should adjourn fairly quickly. Yeah, I've, I mean, I've stated my opinion that I don't think there's need, a need for a moderator if we're appointing folks who are committed to working towards racial justice, however we get there, mm -hmm. however they get there. Mm -hmm. 
I disagree. Is there anyone else that would like to discuss that further? So Eric, if I may, um, and I'm sure I won't be in full agreement, but just table it for now till we see who the picks are and uh, get some sleep and think about it um, and not try to jam it all into one night. I would take that advisement. You, Gordy? <laughs> Sounds good to me. Uh, Rick has asked if he can deliver his comment on this, if, if we're willing. Okay. Okay, well, this is um, a more of a general statement. I want to thank everybody for the time, and it's been an exceedingly long amount of time that's been put into this. Um, so uh, I'd like to uh, touch on a point that Doug made, which was that uh, he was talking about building blocks. Uh, we have the inclusivity statement, which is a building block. And I don't wanna reread that, but it has been approved it's on your website it says town of johnson village of johnson it gives you the legal the municipal and the moral authority to vote for certain things um i also spoke with rosemary today and i asked her to send me a copy of the oath of office. And it says that I, whoever it is, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will faithfully execute the office of whatever it is for the state of Vermont and will therein do equal right and justice to all persons to the best of my judgment and ability according to law. So help me God. Um, Gordy said a while ago, when will this end? And I'd like to help the two boards maybe come to some kind of a conclusion here. It will end when this is not a political thing, but when in the presence of leadership, you do the job that you took the oath to do, which is to uphold justice. And one of the definitions of justice is the administration of the law or authority. And that's what I think is lacking here. So what I would like to see is I would like to see the select board make a motion to support the trustee's decision to fly a Black Lives Matter flag at the municipal building on the flagpole, the symbol of our united government of the town of Johnson. And I would like to have the trustees make a motion setting a date and a time and the manner of raising the Black Lives Matter flag. They have already made the motion to raise the flag, but they have not stated a date, time, and manner. So, if you would like to do the job that you took the oath to do, maybe you would consider those two Motion. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Is there any further comments? I like this idea. Can we do this? You're free to make a motion. Um, is Rick still unmuted? <laughs> Uh, sorry, I just m muted him back up. Okay, Rick, uh, you'll have to unmute yourself again. 
Okay. Am I unmuted? Yes. Yes. Okay. So from the select board, the yep. motion would be to support the trustees' motion to raise the Black Lives Matter flag on the flagpole at the municipal building. Okay. I would make a motion to support the trustees' motion to raise the Black Lives Matter flag at the municipal building. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Without a second, the motion will die. And the motion dies. Okay. Am I still muted? No. Yes. Or no. <laughs> Brian, am I still muted? No, you are not. Okay, good. So then the second part of my uh, thought on this whole thing is that the trustees make a motion regarding a date and time and manner of raising the flag that they've approved at the last meeting. Oh, sorry, Scott. Uh, you have to unmute yourself. There you go. So Rick, on this, we have a, a couple of housekeeping things that we have to do. So I don't see the need to make a motion. We've already made a motion to fly the flag. It passed. Um, there's some work behind it, like how big is this flag? Where do we get it? How much does it cost? What pole to put it up? Um, that's a meeting for the trustees. And I don't see the need for making a motion when we already made the motion and passed it. Um, and the time will be when we get it all figured out. Um, and if you have information on where to get a flag, how to pay for it, and which flagpole to fly it on, okay. well, show up at one, okay. of our, one of our meetings and discuss it. Okay. I know that a flag's been donated. Wasn't aware of it. Okay. Um, yep, so Scott, I got an email late last week uh, from Cal and a few others offering to donate a flag. Um, I didn't respond to it until today because I was out all last week due to the death in my family. Um, so anyway, there's uh, more to come. But as you mentioned, um, there's more housekeeping work to be done in terms of logistics of exactly where to fly it, um, size, and that sort of thing. So. And the there is flag code that I actually sat down and read because it kept getting thrown at me that I should read it. I read it. And there are size dimensions for the flag. It can't be bigger than the American flag. It can't be higher than the American flag. There's a bunch of other stuff that goes with that. So I'm hoping that it's not messing that up because that'll be more phone calls that I'm, you know, we're violating flag code. Right. No, that's what we want to get it right. Um, yep. we've, it's taken a long road to get here um, and we want to make sure that we not further confuse matters. Um, so I have some research to do this week um, and I told Cal that I would get back in touch with him once we have those internal things figured out. Okay. Because this is not on the agenda, could we, uh, we'll be taking this up at our next monthly meeting. Could we uh, entertain a motion to adjourn at 1030? And Rick, you're welcome to uh, zoom in on uh, our next trustee meeting. Um, Gordy, if you're asking for a motion for the trustees to wrap it up. Yes. So move. Yeah, so move. Second. You want me to take the vote? Oh. Well, I was just going to look for the same motion, but go ahead. All those in, okay, all those in favor of uh, Scott's motion for the village to adjourn signify the an aye. Aye. Those opposed? Good night. Thanks, Eric. <laughs> Thanks, <Yeah>. everyone. <laughs> And we've already lost one member. Is the select board uh, prepared to uh, adjourn? I'd look for sure. a motion. Sure that thing. sounds like a motion. Do we have a second? Lacking a second, the motion dies. Second. Okay. <laughs> Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Good night, everyone. Good night.